I'm sorry. <laughs> That's funny. I did that to Rick last night, and I think I had to do it again with a bunch of new people here. Ladies and gentlemen, how is it going? It is episode 31 of the Barroom Podcast, and we are all here once again for a night of wild, wild shit going down right now. We can maybe call this a pseudo live reaction to the Golden Globes who decided to go on a Tuesday. For some weird reason uh, tonight, there's a whole bunch of other breaking news that just happened here in the last couple of hours. But to uh, talk about all the news of the day, I got my good class of regulars here, starting with our good friend Orange Hat Reviews. How are you doing today, Orange? Well, I'm doing a lot better than I was over er, over the last week. So, And then also joining us here today is uh, post-football uh, season Rob Motto. How are you doing today, Rob? Um, it's okay. I mean, I love NFL football. I'll, I'll watch the playoffs. I'm, I'm a big fan. So, but yeah, it's, uh, it's always disappointing when your team doesn't get there and they were, uh, expected to be so, but, uh, Hey, it's a good start to the year for movies. I, I can say that. Yeah. I mean, look at it this way. At least you're not TCU, right? So, I mean, there's yep. also, there's always silver linings there. Joining us here tonight, working on, I don't know what, 19 videos you posted on your YouTube uh, in the last 24 hours. Uh, Nerdigans, how you doing? Sad about the Packers losing, but yeah. this football season has been a wash for me. It's been a wash for fantasy football. It's been a wash for regular football, so it is what it is. Well, someone who should be a chipper uh, football fan today, Ms. C.S. Johnson, because you are now uh, the home for the two-time defending uh, national champion, Georgia Bulldogs. How are you feeling tonight? Um, I don't follow sports, so... <laughs> I tried. I yeah. like, no, just so it wasn't going to work. And then our good buddy, <laughs> Cool Classic Cage, is also uh, joining us here tonight. How you doing, Cassie? Good. Just had some pizza rolls for dinner with hot sauce on them. It's so not real nose, food. My nose is still runny. Uh, bruh, to, to someone who can't cook, I, I can't afford to be choosy, okay? Beggars can't be choosy. I, I settle for what just I can get. I'm not a put some Put some chicken in the oven with some tinfoil and then you just have like to close understand. it. I don't care about food enough to learn how to cook. Otherwise, I would. Just get an air fryer. It's cheap. Yeah. But yeah Live like Naruto. Get a bunch fryer. of ramen all the time. So yeah. I discovered yeah. that cook, learn, like teaching my kids how to cook will keep them from doing worse destructive things. So I have taught, I've been teaching, letting them learn how to cook this week. I wouldn't say teaching, but. <laughs> Trying to take away our gas. Goddamn gas stoves yeah. going out. And you know it's funny because John was uh, John Delarose was talking about that story earlier today, and I'm thinking to myself, you just realize you pretty much are going to put like every like restaurant completely out of business by doing that, right? Like, but but you know this is all part of the you know the the was it the new the 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 new reset or something like that, the great reset. Well, you're all nothing and you'll love it, and then you'll eat bugs because you don't need ovens anymore. So yeah. <laughs> Look, the only time an electric stove is actually a good thing is when, like, for example, in my household, my grandparents were with me, and my grandmother cooked, but she was a little senile. She would occasionally leave the gas stove on. So my parents made the smart decision of, let's get an electric stove instead so we could avoid burning our fucking house down. So that's the only time an electric stove is a better alternative to a gas stove. Other than that, yeah, don't buy an electric stove. If you lose electricity in your house, you're fucked. Period. Rope yeah. yeah. in all the way. And then that's also great, too, because we're also trying to get rid of coal as well. So it's a smart thing to just ban gas. Then everything will be overloaded into the electrical grid, which is run by coal. Then everything's going to run fine. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're doing great here. But uh, how are you guys in the chat doing uh, tonight? We got Duke Nukem is here. I know he's ready to talk about Adam Sessler and that whole trash fire of a human being he's become over the last, uh, what, See, 15 we don't years need or so? We don't need gas. Or love your drunk genius too. So God, many people that just shit is just has walking to be the funniest fires. thing I've ever seen. Oh yeah, we'll get to that one here in a second. And then of course you guys see Rob, CS Johnson, and Cassie who are all in the chat. Alex versus Evil joining us uh, here tonight. 
We have uh, DK joining us once again, Zero Dozer, also in the chat as well. And then Duke Nukem, yep, men on top, women on the bottom, as life should be. And then <laughs> Cole Classic Case, <laughs> end up King I'm the decent pick. It's like, yeah, you're really avoiding <laughs> get any kind of useful skills there, Cassie. But, um. So Cassie had one of the funniest comments in the chat last night because you mm-hmm. brought up we were talking about Dana White tonight. It's like, yeah. slap her again. And it was just like, that was, <laughs> it's very funny. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to talk about this whole Dana White debacle. But like I said, that's where the whole battle on pause for now because some other stuff is going crazy here in the last uh, few hours. But Real quick, I guess we are going to be talking about uh, the Golden Globes throughout the course of this night as well. So you can guess you can call this a Golden Golden Globes coverage show. Uh, I don't really watch any of the, the TV shows. So I don't really know fuck all about any of that. But um, as far as the movies go, they have given out the awards to all the acting categories uh, so far. So Angela Bassett won Supporting Actress for Wakanda Forever, which I, I guess, I mean, what, what was she going up against? Um, Michelle Yeoh won for Everything Everywhere All at Once as far as actress goes. Colin Farrell won for The Banshees of Insurin, and then uh, Everyone Everywhere All at Once won another uh, supporting category. So there's that. Um, as far as TV shows go, Abbott Elementary, which is some show on ABC that I don't watch, is winning a bunch of awards at the moment, too. So uh, do you guys feel like you're missing anything not watching the show live for, for three and a half hours on a weekday? Don't oh, I didn't know it was on. There's an award show on? No. Yeah, the Golden Globes. But see, the ha- what happened was that the show was on on Sunday nights, and that was like Hollywood's big night. But then over the course of the last like five years, they set like new record lows every single year the show's been on because people have increasingly hated celebrities in Hollywood in general that they're just not watching anymore. So they decided, hey, this year, let's just do it on a Tuesday. Let's do it on prime time, and maybe that will get us some viewers. And all I have to say to that is uh, good fucking luck. So. Really. How are they able to I do it though? I don't with, think I'd wish them hold, on, hold on, hold on, How are they able to do it with the cyclone though? That's what I'm curious about. Which one? The, there's one down in LA. <laughs> eh, I mean, you know, if, if God no, works no, his wonders, if God <laughs> works his wonders, they'll hit his target right. So that's all I have to say there. But uh, let's go ahead and get started here. We got a whole bunch of crazy stories that kind of jumped off here over the last uh, few days. And then in the last couple of hours, this story has gotten very, very interesting. We kind of teased this one last week. But uh, Vince McMahon, Vince Kennedy McMahon is back and he's selling WWE. And uh, we just had another uh, little news break about a couple of hours ago. His daughter, Stephanie McMahon, who was the co-CEO of the company, has now resigned from her position. So now everyone on the Internet is panicking and freaking out that Vince McMahon is coming back. He's going to take over WWE. He's going to take over Created from Triple H, who has done fucking nothing in the last four months that he's run this shit. But the bigger story here is that Vince McMahon is back and is looking at a possible sale of WWE. So if you hadn't followed this story about uh, five, six months ago, there was a story that broke out. I think it was the Wall Street Journal. Somebody there has a hard on for Vince, clearly. But um, there was a story that Vince had been sleeping with one of his executives that they had signed a couple of NDAs. So then they had started an internal investigation and come to find out that Vince had about $14 million worth of NDAs over the last 20, 25 years. So they turned this into a scandal that they wanted Vince to step down from the uh, his role as CEO and chairman of the company. Vince fought it for a while, and then kind of abruptly uh, one week he just decides that he's going to retire and let uh, his kids run the company. Now, anyone who knows Vince McMahon understands that that is not Vince McMahon's um, decision-making there. He's a guy who's going to go down and go down in flames if he must. So there was a lot of questions about how long Vince was actually going to be gone. I mean, basically he was out on dates. Uh, in New York and whatnot. I think he went to a couple of like uh, comedy shows and concerts. And they're talking about a 77-year-old egomaniac. He wasn't going to stay long, out for long. The story was that this man felt like he took some bad advice from people close to him who told him to step down. He felt like that if he had just waited it out a few more weeks, the story would have died off and no one would have cared. So now he's sitting at home realizing that he's not running the company that he's been running since, what, the 70s? Or something like that. So now he's like, fuck this. I'm coming back and I'm taking over. And as a fact, um, as a, I guess, a part of the deal I heard coming back, he's going to manage any media rights and sale of the company, which means that WWE cannot sell the company or cannot negotiate 
new media rights for their television shows without Vince McMahon. So it's a hostile takeover here from Vince, who is now back as the uh, chairman of the board. And um, he's not back as the CEO. The CEO is still uh, Nick Khan, but the man who tired uh, last year about uh, allegations of sexual misconduct uh, won't be involved in the day-to-day -day operations. But he says that um, the, the, the he says that the former CEO said that Thursday that the business strategy is to review a strategy which includes a, a possible sale of the company. Now, Stephanie McMahon had made a um, statement regarding its shareholders, saying that fundamentally nothing was going to change as far as the structure of the company goes. Uh, Triple H uh, is still going to be the uh, chief, uh, I think, uh, content officer, uh, something like that, where he's going to be involved in all the creative decisions. Nick Khan is going to be involved with all the business decisions as far as the CEO. But Vince is back, and the word is is that they're probably going to sell sometime soon. Now, if you're looking at the amount of people who could buy WWE at this point, a lot of people are saying that the front runner right now is NBC Universal, aka Comcast. They already have the TV rights for Raw, uh, uh, the network. Uh, NXT and a few other things, so they'd be in the best position to buy WWE outright if that was the case. If not them, people have said that um, Amazon is interested in buying WWE. Endeavor, which is the company that owns the UFC, has also expressed interest in the WWE. Even Saudi Arabia has a re uh, expressed interest in buying WWE. Who knows how many, uh, how much money the Saudis will put out there to buy this thing. But the word is that WWE is on sale and they're looking for offers right now. Now, this is a story that just broke about two hours ago, a follow-up to this story. Stephanie Yan uh, resigned from the CEO. She was the co-CEO for the last five months with Nick Khan. They ran uh, the company together. But now that Vince is back, Stephanie is uh, uh, stepping down from her role. Her husband, Triple H, is still in charge. And I've heard rumors for the last, uh, pretty much the last year, year and a half, that they may have some marriage problems going on behind the scenes that no one's really talking about. But I do find it interesting that she's walking away and Triple H is staying. Maybe that will uh, lead into something there. But the, the notice that she said today is that, like I said, Nick is going to stay uh, running the company. He's pretty much in charge of the sale as well. He's the guy who Vince put in charge to sell the company. And Triple H is going to remain the content uh, chief right now, at least for the time being. Now, this story could change in the next few hours or the next few days. But... This is everything that's setting in right now. Cassie, I want to start with you because obviously you're uh, the closest to the wrestling side of things here. What do you think about Vince McMahon officially being back in charge? He's back as the head of the board. And who do you think would be uh, your best pick as a buyer as uh, WWE is going to get sold here in the next few months? So, I mean, seems like, you know, people on Twitter are absolutely outraged and shocked by this, but Anybody who knows how Vince McMahon is as a person knows that, like, this th this shouldn't be surprising to them. Like, yeah. like, Vince has been overly obsessed with, like, being, like, with how WWE's run. Like, I never, when he stepped down, I was in shock because, like, this dude is obsessed with nitpicking at every little thing in the company. To the company's detriment, in my opinion, uh, for many years. And for him to have stepped down, that was, like, shocking to me. But um, yeah. it seemed like they, you know, maybe he did some stuff, paid off some people for things that he did behind the scenes. Hey, that's his business. And uh, in regards to this, him coming back, it's not shocking. Um, he can't he can't stay away. In in some ways, he hates wrestling, but it, it's his greatest um, achievement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in some ways, I think he's resentful of that. But in other ways, he can't let go. And so, you know, and if he's going to let go, it's going to be. Like, honestly, he, he can't let go and, and not leave on his own terms. I think that's the main thing. Like, the way he stepped down was not on his own terms. He did it for, you know, obviously probably for the betterment of the company at the time because of the uh, allegations presented. So this is him letting go on his own terms because he just can't help himself. And, you know, as in regards to who would buy it, I mean... I don't know who the fuck would buy any wrestling company at this point. Like yeah. wrestling is just a dying, it's a dying uh, sport uh, uh, entertainment. So, yeah. uh, I mean, to me, I just hope whoever does buy it, it won't be like a super mega corporation that uh, like, you know, Comcast or something like that. I, I, they already have too much power anyway. Um, I also hope that it's not, um, not a company that already has a wrestling business. So, consolidation is you know it's never a good thing so yeah. uh 
I don't know. I know Saudis are interested in it because they, they really love wrestling there. I don't know if that's necessarily a good pick, but um, I, I my best guess is probably they they'd like to do it. They're their uh, the people's out there is definitely into wrestling, and uh, if, if they if they ax the women's division, I don't think that'd be such a bad thing. <laughs> Sadly, I mean, like I do like some some of my women's wrestlers, but uh, a lot of them are just bad, and people still talk them out up even despite them being bad. I, at this point, like to me, wrestling, I'm kind of over it. It's sad yeah. to have to say because I really do like some of the wrestlers in, in some of these companies. I really think that there's something cool about a few of them. But um like it's it's reaching it it's reached its peak, it's on the decline. It it's at this point, a lot of them are caving to like Twitter outrage all the time, whatever. So at this point, yeah. if you're gonna do that, I just wanna watch you guys burn to the ground because that's what you're doing at a small rate anyway. Yeah, I mean, just a quick note. Vince McMahon will not accept failure under any circumstances whatsoever. I mean, this is a guy who brought back the XFL after the whole thing fell 20 years ago because he couldn't let go of the dream of the XFL. So, I mean, if you thought that this guy was going to quietly walk into the night and never return again on some Me Too bullshit, you clearly have no idea <laughs> the type of guy Vince McMahon is. It's like, it's really hilarious to me, like, watching the reaction to this, see how people really thought that they had just gotten rid of Vince McMahon and he was never going to return. It's like, he's still the majority shareholder of the company. It's Literally. like, it's his company. You can't kick him out of his own company that he still owns uh, a vast majority of, of the wealth and the power in there. It's like, you're not going to happen. It's like, maybe you got used to doing that with, you know, I don't know, Chris Hardwick or something like that. But uh, Chris Hardwick is no Vince McMahon. Let's just put it that way. Uh, Rob, what do you think about this story? Well, I mean, Vince McMahon and his family, like his father started this company. Like they've been in the business of the WWF for 50 years. So, and, and they crushed the competition. They absolutely crushed everyone. And then, yeah. you know, they kind of let some competitors hang around the last 10 to 15 years after they absorbed WCW or whatever. But, um, you know, it's, I, look, I stopped watching wrestling on about 20 years ago, right when John Cena showed up. And so... I think of Vince McMahon as the funny heel, you know, part of like the the federation, him and and Shane and like, you know, conspiring against The Rock and Steve Austin. But that's 20 years ago. So I'm completely out of the loop when it comes comes to the man. But he seems to be at least what the shareholders want. Um, I can't believe that this business is six and a half billion dollars in value. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm shocked any wrestling, cor even a corporation is worth more than maybe half a million, $400 million. So I, you know, and that's the stock market, but um, so I, I think all of that's interesting, but I, I don't know where the world of wrestling goes from here. You know, I listen to certain YouTube shows that are wrestling fans. You, some of you guys are, are wrestling fans or kind of pay attention. And um, you know, so I get a little tidbit here and there, but you know, I'm, I'm really out of the loop when it comes to the day in day outs of the business. Um, let me shoot this over the orange hat. He has an interesting question here. Um, I mean, Neil has an interesting question here. He says, if the Saudis bought out the WWE, do you think there would be a bunch of uh, outrage if they got rid of the women's division? Well, if the Saudis were to pay for WWE, which they could because they can just outbid everyone. I mean, WWE's value right now is uh, said to be about anywhere between 5 to $6 billion. I personally don't believe it's that much, but if you get into a bidding war, that's pretty much what you're going to have to pay in order to buy it. The Saudis can do something stupid and be like, we're going to give like seven or eight billion dollars for WWE because nobody else is going to match that. And then they can sell it. But at the same time, of course, we all know the leftists and the Wokies don't like Saudi Arabia because there are laws against gays. They're not going to be too happy about uh, a Saudi Arabian company buying WWE. So how's that going to affect uh, TV rights? Are they going to lose TV deals because they're now a Saudi-owned company? What's going to happen to the streaming? Those are some things you got to think about as well. So even though the, the Saudis women, offer a lot of money, it's, it's a double-edged sword there. The women's division will either be axed or the women will end up being dressed up like ninjas for now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, Orange, what do you think about this whole Vince Man story? In the wise words of uh, Vegeta from Team Four Star, wrestling's fake. But anyway, um, <laughs> in my opinion on all of it, I haven't watched it in fucking like 25 years. 
But uh, to be completely honest, if Saudi or my absolute open, honest opinion, if this is an American owned company and a or a country that places human restriction or human rights restrictions on people and would most likely do the same with their company should automatically be barred from placing a bid because one wrestling has been an entertainment or in the entertainment industry for decades. I mean, even before I was born, like seventies, eighties and whatnot. (laughs) And it's like, why would you want to get or put any sort of restriction on it? Because if it does go to Saudi Arabia, get or, as everybody said, the women's division is fucked, and they will completely remove any women who had any sort of uh, power in that company. I honestly, I, what Triple H runs it now. I mean, the last he runs the time, creative side of it, so yeah. I mean, the last time I saw Triple H in anything was that god awful bit or Blade Trinity movie where he freaking got diced like Wiley e. Coyote. Yeah. Um, it's honestly, I really don't have much of an opinion on it because I haven't been interested in wrestling for 25 years, but I do think that Saudi Arabia should not be allowed to place a bid if they are going to violate human right or, or cause human rights violations. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it's going to be a quite a, a will fall. I don't know if WWE would, so like I said, the Saudis would have to. Now, here, here's the problem, though, right? Because you also have to look at them from the perspective that WWE is a publicly traded company. So they have shareholders, they have stockholders, they have to answer to. If the Saudis, let's just say they put up a stupid number, like $10 billion, and they're serious about buying it. Given the rules of the shareholders, if they put up that kind of money, WWE would have to sell. They can't turn down that kind of money as a publicly traded company because their shareholders would have a bitch fit. It was the whole thing with Elon Musk and Twitter. It's like you have to accept Elon Musk's deal for a buyout because if you don't, the stock the price is going to plummet. You're going to be up to uh, legal lawsuits and investigations with the SEC and the whole kinds of other things. So, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw away that Saudi option just yet considering the, the amount of money that we're talking about here. And they will throw away some, some big money starting with a B to obtain this thing. But, um, well, here's I know, the thing. Go ahead. Saudi or Twitter is operated around the world. Does the WWE operate around the world? WWE? I mean, yeah, they, they run shows all around the world. I mean, they do like tours in like Europe and Japan, world stuff tours. like that. Okay, well, I mean, they're primarily that would make like sense the U.S., with but their they... stock options being world available. However, yeah. Honestly, if it is a United States based company, stock options should only be available to those who are citizens of the United States. That's just me, though. That's my opinion and whatnot, because there's too much foreign influence in our stock market. And I I get that there's a world in a global stock market and whatnot. But when it comes to American based uh, shares and companies and whatnot. Yeah. I believe that only senior or senior citizens. I believe that only United States citizens should have the or should have exclusive or exclusivity when it comes to buying and selling shares and owning shares. Yep. I mean, I don't disagree, but you know, the, these are the rules that we went by now that we're sort of publicly traded company. So uh, it'd be very interesting to see how this goes. Now, Nerdigans and Johnson, I know you guys probably care less about pro wrestling, but if you had any uh, thoughts on this story, go ahead as we wrap on to our next one here. Well, I used to watch pro wrestling growing up, and I'm going to say this. The pussification of wrestling is what led to its downfall, and that's why it is ass right now. Yep. <laughs> Honestly, um, I don't know anything about wrestling, and I don't know anything about like sports in general. I'm like a nerd, you know, a nerd nerd. Uh, <laughs> um, but like I think the Saudis buying the WWE sounds like a great, like kind of like old time SNL skit. That'd be funny. <laughs> um, I think this is great for like 
like house parties. I mean, all you need mm-hmm. to do is get a kiddie pool and blow it up and put a bunch of mud in it and you can have your own wrestling match. And, um, I just, I can see a lot more house parties getting broken up with those kinds of incidences going on. So, um, coming to a neighborhood near you. <laughs> just real quick yeah. for, for the wrestling fans out there, where was the Iron Sheik from? Because I just think that that's pretty, very ironic that someone from the middle, you know, a Middle Eastern entity is going to own the... It's supposed to be from Iran, right? Okay, well, okay. So yeah. not exactly, but... I would love to see funny. a specific Taliban-style WWE match where they go in and then at the... Like, the big surprise, of course, would be that they both blow their, their suicide vests at the same time. Yeah. So, I mean, it uh, could be uh, useful... All I have to say is that the Saudis buy WWE, all the women and all the gays, which specifically singles out Sonya Deville, uh, I probably should <laughs> probably find another uh, realm of job. Maybe you can uh, start an OnlyFans like Manly Rose. So that would probably be the best uh, route for you right there. Um, the like I said, who would have known that C or C.S. Johnson had such a bloodlust? <laughs> yeah. I, I just want to say the Iron Sheik is the most based uh wrestling uh wrestler who tweets ever. <laughs> yeah. For what yeah, you have to put that that, that. I think of a new way to kill the earth and destroy people like every other book. So I actually get yeah. tired of it. I've jokingly said one more than once. I'm just gonna let everybody die this time. <laughs> yeah. I have the feeling that like Johnson was like one of those kids who like just threw Barbies on the barbecue grill. I'm like, no, she, no, <laughs> no, she's that little girl in that picture where the house is burning behind them and she's so yeah, that's uh WWE. Like I said, I personally think Comcast makes the most sense for everyone involved, but uh with some of the names that are being thrown out there, it's gonna get very, very interesting and our buddy uh, Zero News apparently says that um, that uh, there's going to be some other big news dropping here in the next uh, couple of hours here. So that might mean that Triple H might be done as well. Or it could mean that they're already in talks about uh, selling the company to a potential buyer. So I guess we'll have to uh, wait and see what this story unfolds here in the next few hours. But a quick little update as we jump back into our uh, Golden Globes coverage uh, here of the night. I know you guys are really uh, waiting for this one. Uh, Zendaya won uh, another Golden Globe for Euphoria, which is an absolutely dog shit uh, television show. But because uh, it has oh basically God. Degrassi with like penises and shit, that, yeah. that people really like love that show for some weird reason. So she's gotten an award like literally every single year uh, for that show, even though it's fucking garbage. And then uh, Austin Butler apparently just won uh, Best Actor for Elvis. So good job. There, there you go. All right. Good job. I don't know. I don't know why I'm rooting for Austin Butler. It's probably because I, when I saw Elvis, I was like, yeah, that's, that's a best actor performance. So yeah. Hey, and it, given who he was up against, there really wasn't anyone else I would have given it to anyway. So I, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll give that one, but let's j- jump in with our buddy, uh, Rick here. Uh, how you doing, Rick? Doing good. How's everyone doing? Um, all right. Uh, how, how you, yeah. how you feel about the news that, uh, your buddy just won for, uh, Elvis best actor for the golden Globes. Well, that's uh, that's good news. Uh, I hope it leads to to him uh, winning. I don't know how how, uh, how old he is, but if he actually managed to win uh, the Oscar, I think he'd be one of the younger uh, Best Actor winners, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. But in terms of a performance, yeah, I, I think he did probably the best performance. I don't know who the other nominees were. To be perfectly and, honest. and considering three years prior, he was getting his face like sh- like just shoved in by well, like what was it dog food in Once yeah. Upon a Time in Hollywood uh, by mm-hmm. Brad Pitt. So it's you know good things happen when you are violently attacked on film. <laughs> yep. Well, once you uh, experience a little humiliation ritual, you can uh, go through and win your golden statue. That's usually how it works in Hollywood, right? It's, yep. Yeah. Well, it's going to be well. Should he win, it's going to be well. It's going to be a pretty big year for him if he wins. If he wins Best Actor, and then he's got that big budget uh, Dune coming up, so he's going he's oh, right. to yeah, he's going to be promoted as Academy Award winner. And then you've got uh, Christopher Walken in that too, so it's going to be it's going to be a big uh, good big year. But he did a he did a great performance. I'm very pleased to hear that. Hopefully, yep. it'll lead to him winning. And then in case you didn't know, uh, Michelle Yeoh won for uh, Best Supporting, oh, sorry, Best Actress in the Comedy for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Colin Farrell won for Banshees of Insurance. And then uh, we all know the 
Angela Bassett won for Black Panther, so there's that. I know you're really excited for that one. Oh, and another uh, little uh, tidbit, just real quick. Uh, Babylon won Best Original Score, and obviously we all know what song uh, tickled your fancy uh, about that uh, movie. If you missed my, last night's my, show. My, my, my Girl's Pussy? Oh, yeah. But well, apparently that's not an original. That's not an original song. It's actually a song from like the twenties. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, as for original score, well, it's fine. I mean, uh, was it Voodoo Mama? Is uh, something that sticks in your mind? Uh, it, it's not something that I would be. Oh, this is terrible. Um, I mean, it's, it's a terrible movie. So uh, apart from original score, uh, has it done anything? No, not really. And maybe they're trying to use this as publicity to get people to watch the film because they know they need the money or else they're going to lose about $230 million on this movie. So Yes, pe people will rush out to, to see the Golden Globe Best Original Score winner. Yeah, for three hours. <laughs> so you guys keep saying um, score and all I can think of is slang term definitions for it. And I'm like, oh, so somebody had a really interesting time sleeping to get this job. Okay. Well, if you've seen Babylon, you would probably know that's probably true. So, <laughs> which just makes it funnier yeah, I'm, I'm, in some ways. Well, yeah, well, I'm telling you, who's ring? Who's calling me at this hour? <laughs> well, uh, Rick uh, answers his uh, phone call. Let's go ahead and move on to our right. other story. <laughs> Let's move on to our other story real quick. Uh, Vince McMahon wasn't the only uh, owner who got into a lot of heat this week. Uh, Dana White got himself into trouble because. Over uh, New Year's Eve, he was in Mexico with his wife in a nightclub. Keep in mind, they're both in their 50s, so that's just weird in itself. But they're in a, a nightclub in Mexico, and let's just say there was some uh, booze was involved, and they got into a little shoving match and a shouting match. And then the next thing you know, uh, Dana White's wife slaps him in the face, so he returns fire and slaps her in the face. And that portion of the video is caught online and went on TMZ. Uh, Dana White went out uh, the very next night and said that, you know, hey, you know, I'm no excuses. It shouldn't have happened. You know, alcohol was involved, blah, 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 yada, yada. Well, most people really didn't care too much about the story. But the media has really, really, really tried to bring down uh, Dana White using this story. And it's a combination of it being personal and political. So let's kind of give you guys a little insight of what exactly happened here. This is the story from uh, the third. So this was last week, but a uh, longtime UFC boss and his wife were partying up and uh, Cabo St. Lucas, when the video happened, I already explained what happened. She slapped him and then he returned fire, slapped her. And then that's where the video cuts off. He explains the incident by saying, my wife and I were out in uh, New Year's Eve and unfortunately that's what happened. He says, I'm one of those guys, if you heard me say for years, there's never an excuse for a guy to put a hands on a woman, and here I am on TMZ talking about it. Dana White said his biggest concern was the situation with the couple's three kids. My wife and I have been married for almost 30 years. We've known each other since we were 12 years old. We've obviously been through some shit together. We've had three kids. This is one of those situations that's horrible. I'm embarrassed, but it's one of those situations where right now I'm far more concerned about uh, our kids. I, uh, we've shown the video. Uh, we've shown the kids the video. We're more focused on our family right now. Uh, people are going to have their opinions about this. Most of the people will be right, especially in my case. You don't put your hands on a woman. My wife and I obviously love each other. This is one of those unfortunate situations. He said the alcohol was involved. There's definitely a lot of booze involved. That's no excuse. I'm literally making no excuses for this thing at all. It's never happened before. It's the first time it's happened. People are going to say uh, what they're going to say. It is what it is. Whatever the people say, I deserved it. Uh, it's deserved. I deserved it. So after a couple of days, there wasn't really much uh, buzz about that after the fact. A couple of fighters kind of like made jokes about it, kind of poked fun at Dana, but it wasn't anything after that. The media got really, really pissed off because um, after a couple of days, they realized no one really cared too much about this story, and they realized that it wasn't going to lead to Dana White losing his job in the UFC and getting quote-unquote canceled. So you had people like Luke Thomas, who's synonymous with MMA. You had Ariel Hawani and a few other um, quote-unquote journalists online who were really beating the drum of Dana should step down. He shouldn't be um, the UFC's boss anymore. Uh, we can't let this happen, blah, 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 yada, yada. Then they started going after ESPN because the UFC has to deal with ESPN and ESPN Plus. It's like, why isn't ESPN condemning this? Why isn't uh, Endeavor condemning this? Why isn't all these other outlets? Why is none of the sponsors saying anything about this? They're, they're really trying to uh, bring this guy down off the story. And it just looked like for the fact that this story was going to go away, 
uh, TBS had announced that they had delayed uh, the uh, what was it? The release of Dana White's slap fighting uh, television show a week, which also angered them even more because that just let them know that no, we don't really care about this story. Uh, Endeavor and ESPN have both declined to comment on it, which means that they just want to move on here. But now the the political part of this is starting to come out because now all of a sudden uh, Democrats in California are now demanding that uh, Dana White step down. So California legislators are now demanding that uh, Dana White step down as the UFC's boss. Uh, Nancy Skinner and uh, Celia, uh, Cecilia uh, Curry, who are both Democrat um, congresswomen from the state of California, uh, wrote a letter to Endeavor demanding that the company that owns the UFC uh, fires uh, Dana White. Now, obviously, Dana White is an outspoken conservative. He uh, spoke at the national convention both in 2016 and 2020 with Donald Trump. He's well-known friends with Donald Trump. So this is another part of the reason why you see so many people who want to cancel Dana White because they want payback for his support of Trump. And that's really what this comes down to because if he was a Democrat, they would probably be looking the other way on this. But they wrote a letter that says, every day that White's uh, actions go unaccounted for, your silence becomes more and more piercing and troubling. At this point, thousands of young women, um, men, women, and adults worldwide have seen the video of Mr. White striking his wife. We've uh, also seen his apology. What we have not seen is any consequences for his actions. This is them writing, by the way. And then I already pretty much read like what he said here. He says, um, the head of uh, major sports organizations uh, cannot claim to be a safety for women while video of him striking his wife continues to circulate online without a response from you. Their hypocrisy is outstanding, the letter says. It's time to remove Dana White from his leadership role and allow him and his partner to get the help that he needs while re uh, reminding the world what Endeavor stands for and that violence against women is one you need not, uh, cannot condone or conduct. So they're going all in trying to bring uh, Dana White down on, on this story when mostly anyone else outside the media has pretty much gone over it. Like I said, this was a week ago. It was dying down, so they're trying to drum up more outrage to keep this thing going. But who knows how well this thing's going to work. I mean, the UFC, here's the reason why nothing's happening right now. They know that if Dana White leaves, then the UFC is cooked. I mean, they don't really have a lot of top stars right now. It was a down year for them as far as uh, star power goes. You get rid of Dana White, you throw in some lefty liberal guy, the whole brand of the UFC is going to fucking collapse, and they know that, which is why they're trying to move on and not say anything about this story. Orange Adam, I'm going to start this one out with you. What do you think about the media's, uh, let's just say, uh, aggressive attempts of cancellation of Mr. Dana White? Well, first off... Um... Fuck the media. Secondly, I don't give a shit about the media. Thirdly, I was always raised if somebody hit you, hit him back. Um, alcohol being involved, yes, that made matters worse. The man apologized, so props to him for doing that. However, he does not, or he should not. Uh, where's the media saying, well, she did strike him first? She had no reason to hit him. Mm -hmm. So him hitting her back, technically, self-defense. As for the political attempts to have him fired, they dare speak about accountability. Where's your accountability for all the uh, politicians who abuse their power, who have call or called for or who have violated their oaths of office by constantly calling for the suppression of citizens' First Amendment rights on media platforms. How about some accountability for your more than corrupt uh, practices with a lot of what you sick and twisted motherfuckers do in Washington, D.C.? What about the accountability of all the things you have done over the past two years with uh, that diaper stain in the office? or in the Oval Office, you dare speak of accountability. And why? Because, well, this guy's conservative. You know what? I don't give a shit if Dana White is conservative, libertarian, lib or uh, the other thing. Yeah, that one. Uh, I don't give a shit if he's a Pope novitiate. He was struck. He responded immediately Basically, which tells you it was an instinctive response. 
I saw the video. The second she hit him, he reached right back and hit her back. That is known as an emotional, re or not an emotional reaction, but an instinctive reaction. If a person hits you, you're probably going to go right back at them. Alcohol impairs your judgment, yes, but that still does not give her any excuse for hitting him. I was raised growing up. If a person hits you, man or woman, it does not matter. You have a right to defend yourself. Now, another thing that I should point out is you don't go excessive force. One hit, one hit. It's complete. The situation is thereby completely done as soon as he hit her back once. Now, did they say that she hit, he went after her several more times? I don't think that was ever reported. So I don't think that is even on record. So, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, there was nothing wrong here except for two or a couple that hit each other. And that's it. Everybody else needs to mind their own fucking business. Rick, uh, since you just joined us here, I'm going to get your thoughts on the story. After everything you heard, what do you think about uh, Dana White and the incident in Mexico? Well, one doesn't um, endorse um, any kind of violence uh, against uh, uh, others. It doesn't help that there, there was a, a lot of boozing going on. And I think it's unfortunate. If um, if she's right or wrong, I think uh, an instinct would be to to slap, you know, go after the person that attacked you. I don't I don't like this whole, uh, but then I really don't know who who these people are. Certainly, just who's more. I, I'm more idea of that. You know, yeah, you're kind of cutting out kids. there. They've been married for 30 years. I'm assuming that they're kids. Yeah, I, I'm having, I guess, some sort of issues here because I'm kind of hearing people and they keep popping in and out. Um, I, I don't have much of an opinion. I don't endorse uh, anyone slapping anyone, whether it's a wife to the husband, the husband to the wife. If um, if uh, if all, he's apologized, um, uh, if this is a domestic um, dispute between two people, um, I, I don't have uh, much of an opinion. I don't endorse anyone hitting the other the spouse. But again, I'm puzzled as to why um, they're worried about their kids. I mean, aren't their kids like in their 20s? I mean, I'm sure they can, they can yeah. see that it's not exactly right. It's not like it's small kids. Uh, the people who are trying to cancel this individual for... Um, for if it's done for his political views, and I don't again, I don't know this person. Um, I, I'm sure there, there's probably other people that have done worse than than this man. I, I really don't yeah. have much of a view because uh, again, I don't follow this. Uh, I don't really know these people, but just don't don't you know don't go uh, don't, don't go. You know, what is that song? Don't come home with drinking don't with loving on your mind. <laughs> that is <laughs> <what> <laughs> Not quite, that is but well. Yeah. But, but here, you know, just, let uh, me just jump. <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. I, don't, like, I really don't have much of an opinion on this. I, Look, I, it's wrong. It's wrong to right. slap, slap anyone. Uh, yeah, and I, I mostly agree. I'm a non-violent person. I don't believe in violence. I really don't. I do believe people have a right to defend themselves. Um, and all I will say is this. I, as a woman, if you're going to hit a man, you ha better have the full expectation he's going to hit you right back whether it's right or not is it's just that's not even for me to say it's like you know what you open that pandora's box and you deal with the consequences that's my real world opinion view of it while being hey i'm never going to put my hands on anybody hopefully unless i'm really defending myself you know for uh, for my life kind of thing so mm -hmm. i'm not a, not a fan of violence but it was also a slap it wasn't a punch it was a slap to the face. That's what he did. It wasn't like Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon, one of the best running backs in the NFL, when he was about to be drafted, there was video released of him full-on punching a woman back. And this was after he was hit first. But it's like that was a closed fist punch to the face. And so it's like this – and so this is very different. 
And I think a lot of people want to take Dana White down, number one, because he's successful. Number two, because he does it his own way. I mean, that's the one thing I respect about Dana White. I don't really give a shit about UFC, but like as a personality, I, I do like that guy. I, you know, I like some of the stuff he said and how he just doesn't give a fuck. So, um, and, and as a man in this moment in 2023, when, you know, any kind of physical altercation, you're looked at like you're a piece of shit. You know, it's like, I'm sorry. I've been in some situations when it's like, guess what? I didn't touch anybody. I was the one who got the, the raw end of the deal. And do you think I went to the cops? Do you think I No, because I'm not, again, I'm not even going to open that. So I've, I have been in situations when it's like, okay, I know what I look like. I know I look like a big man. I'm a fucking pussycat. I'm a nonviolent guy. So, I, you know, I, I can at least entertain the conversation and say it's not always so black and white, you know. But, yeah, I, 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 I kind of think people want to take him down and you should just let him figure out his situation with his wife. Yeah, before I go with Johnson here to get her thoughts on this story, it's like, like I said, the main two cheerleaders that I've seen uh, really going all in on trying to get rid of Dana White is Ariel Hawani and, and Luke Thomas. Now, Ariel has a very long history with Dana White. They've never really liked each other. Uh, Dana White has been at him ever since, I think it was like UFC 2000, which may have been about, what, seven years ago, where Ariel had spoiled the news that Brock Lesnar was going to uh, be at that show before UFC made the announcement, and Dana White was pissed, and since then he's kind of exiled them from covering any kind of like UFC media. So him and Dana have had like a personal thing for a while. So to see him kind of like root for Dana's downfall at least makes sense in my mind, because at least he actually has like a personal stake in this whole uh, beef with him. But everyone else, Luke Thomas and all these other uh, journalists, it's all purely political for them. They hate him because he supported Trump. They hate Trump. So it's like, well, we get a chance to take down one of Trump's buddies, and we're going to do it. Even though, like I said, clearly the reason why they're beating their chest as hard is because nobody cares, and they're trying to force people to care, which is only making more people more irritated. But, uh, Johnson, what is your thoughts on uh, this whole story here? Um. Well, I mean, like, he came out, and he apologized, and he said he was wrong, and... um. I don't know. I just don't think it's the media's place to be the judge between a, a man and his wife. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like, like, I mean, there's definitely, oh, he's a Trump person. Let's get him. And, oh, maybe it's a slow news day or maybe there's some other things that they want to forget about reporting on. They're just inconvenient, you know, to, to the narrative. But, um, yeah. I I would just just uh, I I don't know I don't have a lot of faith in the integrity of of the journalism today so um I would just leave it at that I mean like that at that point like you know it's the wife's decision to do something I guess because he hit back and mm -hmm. if she doesn't want to do anything what's it to these people you know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's nothing um, personal. I mean, like, it's nothing personal. Like, they're not actually personally concerned about her. Or No, not at all. Yeah. And they're only using her as a tool to bring him down. That's what it really comes down to. Yeah, and that's yep. not that's not appropriate. All right, I'll let Nerdigans and Cassie cap this one off before we move on to our next topic. Well, in regards to the politicians, it's like, dude, you're really doing this now when we have a freaking cyclone. There's plenty of cities in California that are getting flooded and you're worrying about this and plus California is broke. Why are you? Oh, well, and yeah, homeless. Art of distraction. That's why and art of deflection. That's why they're doing that. Cause they don't want to actually focus on the real problems. Cause that's how California politicians operate nowadays. Unfortunately. I think most politicians are like that. It's like how everybody like automatically talks about the Yahtzees and stuff. It's like they're they're mm -hmm. gone. There's like four hundred oh, left in America. California's total. master it's, uh, of it. That's the California like, politician way. They it's, the California Democrats way. The Republicans try. Yeah, yeah, but I mean like the war's been over for like eighty years. <laughs> uh, I mean, it just it just it does astound me that it's like that's what we're going back to. So. Yeah. Well, you have to remember, yeah. isn't California about to hand out the checks for a reparation to its um, African American population? So, so stupid, 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 stupid! It shows you how great the public education system is here when California wasn't even a slave state. 
doesn't make no fucking sense. Well, I mean, the first thing I would like to say is that um, I'm libertarian, very anti-violence. Um, the va basic concept of imposing your force on another person, I am completely against entirely. Um, but I am wholeheartedly, like, for self-defense. I'm the type of person, like, I am a, you know, concealed carry gun owner. And uh, I say that libertarians are kind of like hippies, but with intelligence. Like, we don't ever want to get into a fight, but fuck around and find out. That's pretty much how it is. Um, in regards to this situation, honestly, it's really, it really shouldn't be anyone's business besides Dana White and his wife. Uh, unfortunately, the media and due to political narratives, they make it um, so much bigger than what it is. Now, if uh, he was being an avid, like, um, like avidly a problem to his wife and that, like, is a scandal of, of some sort, uh, that's a mm -hmm. different story. But it just seems like they were both just drinking. Uh, they had a little dispute and each caught a slap for it. <laughs> you know, that, that seems what it is. Now, if he was literally, like, you know, punching, if he punched her, after she had slapped him, like that's that's a different, like that's a, a higher yeah. level of force. But it seems like it was just like she slapped him, uh, it upset him, so he slapped her back. Um, and he probably does genuinely regret it because it isn't like he, it seemed like he wanted to, you know, be uh, abusive by any means. But um, I will also say this a lot of women nowadays think that it's okay to hit a man because, of course, they're not gonna hit back. And honestly, they need to stop doing this shit. If you throw a, a slap, a punch, or any excessive force on anybody, then it doesn't matter what their gender is. If they choose to fight back or to, you know, defend themselves by imposing their force right back at you, be prepared for it. Otherwise, stop this stop bullshit. bullshit. If you're going to throw hands, yeah. be prepared for what comes yeah. with that. I don't want to hear any, any crying and whining afterwards. If you started it and they finished it, that's on you. But at the end of the day, it just seems like these two were just drinking a little too much. And what happened, happened. It didn't seem like, you know, it, it, it's so, it seems like they're making it so much more than what it is. Um, it sucks that it happened. Uh, Dana White obviously is a big, a big figure behind a violent sport. So, you know, yeah. this instance isn't necessarily the best light for him. But um, nobody's perfect. He's not a god. You know, he's just another human being like the rest of us. And uh, he does seem like he's sorry, but um, don't cave to these fucking people. Just let it go by. Uh, that's that's the biggest thing I can say. Like, as long as you do what you need to do on your end for your family, that's what's important. And just let this bullshit just pass like everything else. Yep, yep. Uh, I know the UFC's next pay-per-view is next Saturday in Brazil, which is crazy enough in and of itself. So I'm not sure if you guys realize, but uh, Brazil's kind of going through some shit right now on their own. So yeah. to have a, a, a MMA card in, in the country is, during everything that's going on right now is crazy in and of itself. But I don't know, maybe give uh, Dana an excuse not to attend uh, any uh, media press this next uh, week and a half where everything is going on there. So uh, stay tuned uh, for that one. Um, yeah, like I said, th this whole thing is just kind of like the media's trying the, their hardest to uh, keep the story alive. It's like they know that the, the flame is burning out, so they keep trying to like throw trash at it to keep the fire going so that they can bring this guy down. It's just, it's just not going to work. You know, like I said, we talked about earlier, you tried to Me Too, Vincent Mann, that didn't work. You tried to bring down uh, Dana White, this story, that's probably not going to work either. So I don't know, maybe you guys should go back to actually, you know, being a formative uh, news site to their propaganda arms. But, you know, that, that's, uh, I don't know, that's just the way that our, our world works now. But, Quick little update on the Golden Globes as this is going on right now. Uh, Kate Blanchett won for Tar. Best Actress for Tar. So there's that. Uh, not really much else has happened uh, since then. Um, what is it? Uh, Gail Motoro, uh, Pinocchio won Best Animated Feature. So I know that will make uh, Josh oh, very happy. Disney actually <laughs> lost. Thank God. God. Oh, that Turning Red movie? No, that Turning Red was never going to win. If Turning Red won, that I would have a, a major problem with uh, that shit. Now, what I do have a problem with, however, is the fact that RRR did not win Best Non-English uh, Film. Some For some reason, they gave that to a film called Argentina 1985, which is like, fuck off. 
Uh, I think Argentina 1985 involves, um, I believe, um, Maradona a military, a mil uh, no, a military um, coup. Uh, I, I they sent me the screener, and again, I'm, I'm flooded, so I haven't seen it yet. But I believe it probably even involves some sort of uh, coup. In oh, the so it was pol it was political. That's why they gave it to him. Uh, maybe, maybe I can't say because I haven't seen it. Um, as for um, Kate Blanchett. I mean, she's going to be very tough uh, competition. I know. I think uh, Ana de Armas was in that category as well. Mm, if yeah. um, if you if if uh, de Armas actually manages to get a nomination uh, for the Oscars, it would be kind of an upset. Uh, this does, however, I I, I don't know if uh, Daniel Deadweiler for Till was nominated in this. Uh, as I understand, it's the greatest cinematic performance by a woman in the history of all mankind. No, uh, yeah, no nominated. nomination. And I don't think that she should get an Oscar nomination either, frankly. Like, no, she's not no, bad, I mean, but she's not giving one of the best performances of anyone's lifetime. Like, it's it's a ridiculous thing to say. It's like, well, uh, it's it's this mother who worries about something horrible happening to her son, and then it happens. And then it's just, it's a big show of, look how much I cared and nobody else did. And I have to care about every black child that's murdered by the, but you know, whatever, by this racist system. That's the whole fucking performance. And the fact yeah. that it, it's all, even on par with Anna de Armas's recreation of Marilyn Monroe, I'm sorry. And and sorry, I'm getting on a, on a tangent here. The Academy, no, the Academy loves re, like playing real people. Okay, they like to award that. Now, now that movie is too divisive and that's going against it so i'll be interested to see that but that's why austin butler has a real chance because he's elvis presley he's a real uh he's playing a real person um and if you yeah anyway go ahead no, no well i was going to say that if you look through the um academy for best uh for best actor it's oh i think it's in the past 10 years maybe once or twice where the all five nominees were for fictional characters biopics mm -hmm. are catnip especially for lead actor. And you look at some really awful performances. Uh, Eddie Redmayne still one of the worst performances to win, but it was a biopic and it was a trifecta. He was playing British disabled uh, biopic. Uh, as for uh, Daniel Deadweiler, well, yeah, exactly. Michael Keaton was robbed. It was, it was a Long trifecta. Uh, the thing with, uh, yes, he was. He definitely was. And I did not like Birdman at all, but I thought he did an exceptional job. Um, with Daniel Deadweiler, I thought it was a respectable performance. Uh, my issue is that Till reminded me of Gandhi, a, a movie that is uh, far too... I mean, it's a well-made film, but it's uh, far too reverential toward the lead character. Uh, Gandhi is, is is deified, and with, an, uh, with uh, um, uh, Mamie Till Mobley, you have a similar situation where she is, where you saw the 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 figure, you saw the public figure, but you never saw the woman, uh, you know, the, the private woman who has to endure this uh, agonizing loss of her only child. And yes, uh, that, that build up to where, uh, no, he wasn't. He was hideous. Um, yeah, come on, he's terrible. In terms of in terms of uh, of of her performance, I think the script. Uh, laid it on too thick about her constant worry. Now, again, she might have been genuinely concerned, but you have that shadowing. Is it a good performance? Yes. I would not uh, argue that it's a terrible performance. Uh, but again, I I always saw, I only saw the, the, the figure. I never saw the, the private woman. And some of the people who have been building up Daniel Deadweiler as, you know, the most transformative performance in, in all of film... Uh, People, I, I'm sorry. Uh, if you want, for me, uh, Vivian Lee in Gone with the Wind was a much better performance than Daniel Deadweiler. Uh, I'm, yeah. it's, it, that is, uh, for me, that is the greatest female performance to win. Um, and also, oh, it's put like um, Catherine Hepburn in um, not in the Golden Pond. What's the other one? Uh, um, I, know, I guess it was something. Uh, Line in Winter. That was an, also an exceptional performance. Uh, Daniel Deadweiler was fine. Here's the problem: if Daniel Deadweiler does not get but Ana de Armas does expect a lot of people to target her specifically. They're not going to target Blanchett. They're not going to target maybe even Viola Davis. If she can just get it for Woman King, they're going to focus specifically on Ana de Armas because so many people hated Blonde. 
they can't see the forest for the trees. But yeah. Kate Blanchett, no, it was a, a very strong performance. Uh, I, I have to give her credit. Uh, but it's going to be really between her and Michelle Yeoh uh, for for lead, assuming both. Because uh, the, 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 they're building up a very great, um, uh, kind of a great battle between them. Well, uh, right, right now, like there's still four categories left, and and so they got best director, best screenplay, and then actor. I mean, and then movies for drama and comedy. And it seems like everywhere, everything all at once is going to be the movie that cleans up tonight. Because I mean, they, I've kind of got that feeling going back from last year that that was the movie that they were going to gravitate towards. And it seems like that's what's happening right now. So we still got those um, ones coming up and we'll see uh, if they do end up winning. But let's uh, move over here to our next story here. And this is a funny one, only because John Nolte wrote this story. So, uh, Orange Hat, this is the one that you recommended for us. So I'm going to let you try to pronounce this guy's name uh, properly. Oh, so I'm going to go ahead and put you on the spot here. <laughs> Our Kamal Nanjiani. Yes, that guy. Uh, the one from Stupor and all the other shitty movies that I have seen him in over the last uh, few years. He's another one of these actors where I don't believe I've ever seen him in like in a good movie ever. Maybe that's being a little bit of hyperbole, but I can't think of one solid movie this guy's ever been in. But apparently he's upset now that uh, only white guys are playing villains. So, as you know, um, Hollywood over the last few years has inserted all these diversity quotas and things of that nature where they're trying to get rid of white people in film. And then it feels like the only time they have white people in film is when they're playing the bad guys. Well, now he's complaining that only white guys are the bad guys in movies now. So I'm going to go ahead and just give this little quote here. By the way, this is what Nosey wrote. Privileged, humorless, affirmative action recipient, an infamous woke card. <laughs> uh, Kanil uh, Nigeria, whatever you pronounce the name, I don't give a shit. Uh, it's, always, uh, cry, <laughs> it's always a uh, cry. It's always a baby about something, and now he's mad that Hollywood's understandably terrified that members of the woke Gestapo, like Khalil, will get upset if someone other than a white guy is a villain in a movie. So now he's complaining about the fact that, hey, I want to be a bad guy, but I can't be a bad guy now because I'm brown, and they want to villainize brown people, so now I can't be bad guys. So this is his quote. I think that Hollywood now, even though they're trying to be be me, uh, they're trying to be more diverse. Is uh, still weird, uh, he says. He says the problem is is that uh, the good intentions can sometimes lead to misguided solutions. Meaning that it was completely fine when they were only making white guys uh, the bad guy in movie for woke reasons, but now I can't get work, so now it's a bad thing. Uh, if the bad guy is a brown guy, what message is that sending? That I don't know. The bad guy is a brown guy. I mean, there's really nothing much to it. Um, and that uh, it's just limiting as anything else. He says I want to play more bad guys. He says. Um, I would like a career varied uh, as uh, Marvel stable mate uh, Sebastian Stan, who can fit a superhero and a serial killer. He said uh, he does these big Marvel movies, then he'll play a psychopath. I was told that it was going to be hard because people don't want to cast non-white people as bad guys. Well, that's the bubble you created for yourself. You're one of these people. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen the meme at this point. Where like the guys like holding the gun, they change the race, and like every time the race is changed, someone's complaining. So if it's two white guys uh, uh, in the scene and they're complaining, where's all the black people at? Then when you put the the gun in the hand of the black guy, it's like why the black guy have to be the bad guy? So you put yep. both black guys in there, and you're like, oh my god, uh, why is it black on black violence? So then uh, when when the uh, when the white guys holding the black guys, like, oh my god, this is racist. Why is he attacking the black guys? Like you're never gonna make these people happy. They're always gonna fucking complain about something. And like I said, you, this is the problem that you created because you didn't want uh, you only once portrayed white people as bad. Now you can't get any work. It's like, well, hey, can we change this so now the brown people can be the bad guys again so I can get paid? It's like I don't know what more you want to say about the story. Orange Hat, I know you want to talk about this one. So what do you think about? Uh, your boy here not complaining that uh, only white guys are villains in movies now. Well, I think it's actually, ref one, it's refreshing because it's exposing Hollywood's actual agenda. They have gone mm -hmm. anti-white. They have basically said only white people can play villainous roles because, well, we don't want the, or we don't want to incur any anger of putting a POC in a villainous role. Well, now you got POC actors who are actually coming forward. Yeah, they supported the woke narrative, but now they're realizing just how much of a mistake they made by doing so. And he's right. It's like they would, or a lot of I hate to say this, but if you want to do 
the whole diversity thing, that means you're going to have to encompass all of the aspects, including villainy. Or there have been some very evil people out there with of different races, like the Dahomey slave traders. They actually tried making a movie, making them out to be heroic. Mm -hmm. um, that didn't turn out too good. I believe that movie uh, bombed. It did, yeah, it, it didn't make his money back. It definitely lost money as much as they tried to pretend like it was a success. Yeah, and you also have other people, or you have some people who were some very nasty people south of the border. But you can't have anybody playing those people. I mean, Danny Trejo, as much of a good guy as he is in real life, he played a lot of villainous roles because he also felt that it was a necessary thing to show that there are or there is evil down there. And those are and that these are those or this is what they can do and this is what they do do. I mean, it shows a great deal of hypocrisy. I mean, one of my favorite or favorite examples of Hollywood hypocrisy is how James Cameron, when talking about Terminator Dark Fate, we're going to make this a movie that draws attention to the border or to the bigotry at the border and how there's not so much of a problem at the border yet all of the Mexico scenes were shot in Spain because of the cartel danger. And it's like, yeah, congratulations, you dumbass. You played yourself. What, you thought that people wouldn't figure that shit out? And I just find it that it is good that some of these actors are actually finally waking up. Yeah, he, like you said, he was, or he's basically a woke tard. He pushed for it all. He supported it all. Well, now that he's suffering, he's going to fake, or he is standing against it. Hopefully, others will do the same because they'll possibly, I mean, miracles do happen once in a while. Um, they'll possibly start waking up and say, we made a terrible mistake with this. I think it's time to get rid of this fad that is wokeism. Rob, and you, oh, that's oh, basically my thoughts on it. Uh, Rob, what is your thoughts on uh, this, this moron now complaining that he can't get work? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit like the boy cried wolf. You know, when you have an infantile relationship to race and, you know, uh, diversity mm -hmm. and these buzzwords that don't really mean what you are, are saying, you know, what you mean them to, um, you know, elicit or whatever. It's it's I use the word all the time. I am tokenism. And that's exactly what it is. It's, hey, you know, I should get more opportunities because I my people historically haven't been represented on the screen. And it's like when you live by that rule, you die by it, too. So guess what? When people don't want to cast people of color, whatever the fuck that means, non-white people in villainous roles, it's like, guess what? You only get to be this one thing in these rather general, you know, sort of hero based stories, the stuff that's being made today, there's not a whole lot of avenues you can go down. And the writing is shit, meaning the characters that that are conceived are shit. And so it's like, there are no interesting parts. And everything is in this ideological framework that you have to tiptoe around. And it's like, well, welcome to our world dipshit. Welcome to what we've been warning about for fucking yes. six, at least six, seven years. It's like, this is not good for anybody. It's going to make the, con it's going to make movies and TV shows worse. It's going to make actors, you know, basically you only have these very select choices of roles you can do. And people like um, Kamel Namjani, I don't know fucking how to say his name. I mean, he was on like, I think the daily show, like he was one of those guys who kind of like, got into more um you know more comedic roles like parks and rec or um portlandia i think he's on that show um and he, he hit it big with the big sick which was an oscar nominated uh movie i think i think he won an academy award actually for it um for, for the screenplay or okay he was just nominated mm -hmm. um but yeah it's so it's very frustrating having been you know at the forefront of this and now hearing the people who thought you know thought they were going to benefit you know, kind of talking about sour grapes. Yeah. 
Um, I do have just a little quick little uh, Golden Globes news, just real quick, if you hadn't uh, heard. Steven Spielberg did win for The Fablemans, Best Director, and uh, Martin McDonald did win for uh, Best Screenplay for Banshees of Insurance. So there you go. So everything, everywhere, and all at once isn't going to sweep tonight, at least as far as those categories go. But um, uh, yeah, anyone else want to uh, talk about this story here? Yes. Um, like I, I noticed that that you were just um, like saying that you can predict what's gonna happen in some of these movies now just because based on race and gender, yeah. and that's what film has devolved to, and that to me is a huge concern. Uh, I don't want to watch films and automatically be able to distinguish the landscape of what's gonna happen just based upon people's race. Uh, unfortunately, this is what these like activists like how they are they're so short-sighted they don't see the repercussions of their own ignorance and yeah. now oh yeah well now we're, we're suffering because we can't get these really good roles and to be honest i always prefer the villain roles like x-men exactly. were some of my favorite movies growing up and guess what magneto was my motherfucking dude like straight up mm -hmm. like ian mckellen and even michael fassbender's performances were insane so for me it's like to me the villain is like that's like a role that I would love to play in any film if I could play, uh, uh, you know, a, char a specific character. And now, oh, well, now I can't get this role because I'm not white. And <laughs> white people are the demonized ones. It's like, well, the chickens came fucking home to roost. That's why, you know, it should be given to the people that are the best for said role and not based upon trivial things such as race, gender, or uh, creed, or sexuality. Like, you've made it uh, divulged to this trivial level and now oh it's a problem but guess what you with your consistent activism and browbeating the fuck out of people yeah now people that cast for this stuff now they're afraid to cast someone that isn't a white male uh most of the time to play a villain role because they don't want to be told that oh you're racist for do for for casting someone who's black or, or a female to play his roles that's what happens. You scared people in, into not hiring the best po potential person for said role or, or person that genuinely does fit in the role. And this is what you have to deal with. But hey, keep 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 fucking uh, attacking the people that constantly you know bring all this up that this stuff is going to happen because everyone's seen it except for you. But continue with your ignorant activism. Keep pushing the CRT um, agenda. That's what you're doing. <laughs> That's what you're really doing is pushing the CRT agenda and regressing things back to the pre-civil rights eras. And you, these mofos keep saying that they don't like mommies and like blackface and all that. What do you think you guys are doing? You're pushing that. That's all they're doing. They're just doing blackface in a different way. Well, yep. Kamel Nanjani, curiously, is um, is the one who was pushing to have uh, more heroic characters. I mean, this is someone who was um, delighting in ha in being a hero in the Eternals because we needed a, an Indian uh, hero, and now he's complaining that he, he can't play a villain. I, I think he did. There was like a, a mini series. I don't know if it was Netflix or Hulu. Uh, was it Welcome to Chippendales? It was based on a, on a true story oh, where the yeah. villain was of Indian descent. Um, Kamil Anjani is uh, speaking out of both sides of his mouth. He wants to play the hero and he wants to play the villain, but he complains that nobody wants to cast him because he created uh, the atmosphere where if you uh, cast a uh, if you if you cast a minority as a villain you're you're racist so you really can't have it both ways it's it's kind of uh, it, it reminds me of uh, a lot of the openly gay actors who insist that only openly gay actors can play openly gay roles um but then they complain that you know we're not being cast in, in straight roles well it's because you, you decided to focus you were so yeah, you kind of cut it, out there but... that the, oh well i'm saying that uh, the the openly gay actors who insist on playing that insist only openly gay actors can play gay characters they um they they're shocked that they're not being cast in, in straight roles it's it's yeah. pretty much the same situation here yeah. kumail nanjiani yeah. has been uh, pushing to have uh, a more diverse uh more diverse casting but probably just for more was it positive sales and i mean that's a good thing you certainly want to have uh, more positive uh, images for people but if you're going to be an actor you 
you should be able to regard. Uh, sorry, uh, I don't know why I'm kind of fading in and out. Um, if you, um, I've always said, if all for a um, for a particular race or gender, it should be opened up to as wide a, a variety of characters. Uh, you're not for nowadays. Maybe nowadays, maybe you can cast a, a minority to play a, a historic figure. Like, well, we I'll had, say uh, this, guys, because you are you are jumping in and out just a little bit yeah. there. But uh, sorry. So essentially, I but why. yeah, I, I understand like what this guy is saying. But like I said, this is what you what you've created. You complained so many years about how um they're not casting enough brown people in these type of roles and these type of roles, and we don't have enough LGBTQ people. We don't have enough disabled people. It's like. You guys are the ones who complained and bitched and cried and lobbied for years for Hollywood to turn into what it is now. And now all of a sudden you're starting to see backlash because you just thought that it was going to be all good and all gravy now. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'm a brown guy, but Hollywood doesn't want brown people to be uh, villains in movies anymore, which means that my uh, range as an actor has now been very, very limited to extremely shitty comedies that no one is ever going to love and no one's ever going to remember. Well, guess who fucking fault that is? Like, this is all your fault. You're the part of the reason why it is, and reap what you fucking sell. And as uh, Joker said in the movie, you get what you fucking deserve, and then here you are now. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I, I kind of get your complaints, but at the same time, this is also your fault. So what else do you want me to say here? Um, I do have one kind of breaking news story here um, before we uh, move on to our next topic, and this is kind of the talk about what we said we talked about here earlier tonight. We were talking about this man coming back and WWE possibly being sold. It's now being reported with a few uh, news sources here now. This is still all in flux right now, but it is being reported that according to uh, sources, WWE being sold is already a done deal, and they expect WWE to be sold to the Saudis. So it looks like the Saudis may have actually come from behind here and mm -hmm. stolen the WWE from this big man. Now, like I said, all this news is still uh, pending right now. It hasn't been 100% confirmed, but sources, multiple sources are now reporting that the Saudi deal is a done deal. They're waiting to make the uh, announcement official. And when Saudi Arabia does buy WWE, that they're going to take the company back private. It will no longer be a publicly traded company anymore. <laughs> so there's a couple of uh, big moves uh, going on there. So if this does, in fact, happen, and the Saudis have just, in fact, bought the WWE, Everything that we just said earlier is going to change, like, on a dime. Like, this might be the end of women's wrestling. This might be the, the end of Triple H in charge of uh, WWE. Uh, there, I, I expect a whole lot of people to be uh, leaving this company here soon and then the next few months if this deal goes through because I don't think that Saudi Arabia values any of the bullshit that the woke tears here in the United States of America do. And it's going to be very interesting to see where this company uh, goes out. But if the Saudis have, in fact, um, bought WWE and it seems like it's a done deal now, they must have offered a stupid amount of money that uh, WWE just could not have turned down. So I'm guessing somewhere in the, in the range of like maybe seven to eight billion dollars and they just took the deal so uh kind of crazy if, if that's true what is your immediate thoughts here before we move on to our next story saudi mania running wild brother yeah um, and and they're taking it private too big fucking yikes bro <laughs> yeah <laughs> yikes i guess Man. what i said earlier is actually gonna happen well isn't yeah. this like good isn't this like a technically like a positive thing in terms of like, I mean, the, the whole problem. Okay. Granted, I, I don't know much about the WWF in its current state, but wasn't the big complaint that it's not like the attitude error anymore that they're, they, they're trying, they're over, they're trying to force like woke shit and ideologically like in, instead of just like celebrating, you know, wrestlers for what they are, which is ridiculously, you know, ripped, muscular mm -hmm. like dudes and you know i don't know chicks that are good at acrobatics i don't know but it's like so i i don't know i'm kind of interested to hear what everybody has to sort, has to sort think of like it's a mixed bag it's a mixed bag it's one of those things where like you know there's this extreme and then there's the other extreme and it's like yeah we believe that you know this woke shit that that wrestling uh continues to propagate is definitely one of the extremes it's a problem it's a detriment to you know the sport 
and, and the entertainment of it all, but also, yeah, you, you're dealing with Saudi Arabia and where people disappear yeah, and, and crazy shit happens. And they have pretty extreme um, religious doctrine level. I, I, I will say this. Concerning I, too. I will say this real quick because I know a few people in that locker room who, let's just say they may uh, identify as self-proclaimed Satanists. You may be out of a job here in the next few months because if you think that shit's going to fly over in a Saudi-owned company, yeah, all you people on that black craft bullshit, you might be uh, looking for new jobs here in the next few months. It's going to be pretty crazy. I mean, if you love chaos, this is the most interesting story that pro wrestling has had in about 20 years, probably since yeah. the death of WCW mm. here. So I mean, to it, be it's going to get crazy. These weirdos that you're talking about, they have no principles at all. They'll, they'll fucking sacrifice whatever bullshit-ass belief they have to get their money. Like, they, they have zero principles in the grand scheme of things. So, I mean, whether, you know, Saudi finds out about their nonsense is a whole other story in itself. But, you know, they don't have principles. I don't quick expect question. any of the female wrestlers to be wearing Shador's anytime soon. No, I mean, like I said, and Neil just basically asked me a question here: Would the Saudis make WWE better or not? I mean, it depends on are, are they buying the company and going to let Vince and his guys run it the same way, or are they going to buy the company and be like, "This is how you have to run this is now because we don't agree with this thing and this thing that you're doing here." Like, we don't know that right now, but I know a lot of people are also saying the same people who are reporting that. The Saudis are is a done deal now. They're also reporting that Triple H and all of his guys that he brought in are expected to be fired and whatnot in the next few months too. So this, this shit's crazy. Uh, this, this shit's gonna be pretty yeah. crazy. I mean, I know there was a lot of talk about The Rock possibly coming back in the next few weeks for Royal Rumble. I don't know if he wants to be associated with a company that's now owned by the Saudis, even though Hollywood did use him to, to court the Saudi prince a few years ago. That's something that actually happened. But we all know how uh, Rock is protective of his image and, and things of that nature. So all I have to say is uh, buckle up, because uh, the next uh, few hours on Twitter is going to be very, very fun. <laughs> yeah, Bray Wyatt, uh, all, all those dudes. Uh, go ahead. Wasn't it, wasn't it like the Saudis that did the start of that new golf uh, yeah, live golf and stole like so much of the talent away from the PGA Tour. So, like, yep. I, hey, and here's the thing about I do know about Saudi Arabia, they're a fucking weird ass country. Okay, yes, yeah. they have all that religious <laughs> shit for like the especially for the normal everyday citizens. Those rich guys are like basically a lot. Or how about this? The ri the rich guys, their kids. A lot of the kids who get the money are basically like Westerners. Like they yep. they're not in, they don't live a strict life. They don't live. I'm, so I'm very curious to see how this plays out. The people specifically who bought WWE just to see, like, are they interested? Do they know it's an American product? I mean, they're not. I don't think that they would torpedo a company. Just be like having everywhere and wear hijabs. You know what I yeah. mean? So I, I again, I'm curious to see where it goes. They're not. Like I said, I, I'm interested right now. Just real quick before I let Rick go, because you know guys like Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are done, because there's no way they're gonna work for a company <laughs> owned by the fucking Saudis. Like this, this is this is gonna be the blowback of this story if it is true. It's gonna be massive if this whole thing uh falls apart here. And like I said, Tony Khan. I mean, we've been talking about Tony Khan needing an opportunity to get a boost up. If if this whole thing causes a massive fallout within WWE. And all these guys jump ship to AEW. Tony Khan could use uh, the incoming talent to kind of leverage a deal for his company as well. So it's going to be a good thing for AEW, and they they need some positivity right now. But uh, go ahead, Rick. Well, no, I I don't really think there's going to be um, much of a change uh, immediately. There might be a gradual change. You might see uh, if, if they decide um, to have sort of a, a laissez faire uh, attitude toward this, they might just let. Uh, you know, might own the company, profit off of it, uh, but not really get involved. So they might just stay out of it. Yeah. I I don't really see a lot of uh, major change. But um, no, Rob is right. When um, when a lot of them come to the U.S. Uh, as students, they they yeah they they drink, they cavort with uh, with people of the opposite or maybe even the same gender. Um, and um, there's a lot of surprising amount of drinking in, in all those uh, palaces out there. But of course, not all the Saudis are, are living off the, the wealth, you know, the oil wealth. There is a very poor, there, there are very poor people in places like um, Medina and even Mecca. 
So yeah, I, I really I don't see much of a change if if they decide just to use this to to make uh, more money. So uh, you're you're I, I don't uh, but you never know if they decide to to start imposing this. Although I doubt that you're going to see um, WrestleMania in Riyadh anytime soon. Uh-huh. You know, you're not you're, you're not you're gonna gonna have that. Well. I mean, it depends because WWE already does two shows a year in Saudi Arabia as part of their uh, Saudi Arabia deal. So, I mean, a WrestleMania in Saudi Arabia isn't really that out of the, the possibility here. And I'm not sure what will happen in the next couple of years because the WrestleMania this year is supposed to be in L.A. The next year they had already announced it's going to be in Philadelphia. Who knows if that uh, plan uh, changes here. I don't think they'll do uh, – they'll change it this year. Next year maybe they'll change it. But, yeah, this – this thing's gonna get uh, pretty fucking crazy here, so I'm definitely all in on this ride. But um, uh, before we continue here, Golden Globes update: no real update here, nothing as far as the movie goes. We're basically just waiting for Best Picture, Drama, and uh, Musical Comedy that hasn't happened yet. So let's jump over since we're talking about wrestling. Let's jump over to another wrestling-related story. Ryan Johnson uh, came out during an interview not too long ago and said that Dave Bautista is the best wrestler turned actor of all time. So I want to see if you guys agree with this statement here. Uh, okay. Dave Batista, <laughs> Dave Batista worked on uh, Glass Onion, uh, that terrible Ryan Johnson Netflix uh, film earlier um, a few months back, and they're doing an interview talking about Dave Batista. He was asked about uh, uh, Batista's acting chops, and he said that he was seriously impressed by uh, Dave Batista's dramatic acting, and he went on to say this to the Atlantic. I 100% agree, Johnson said, stating that uh, Dave Batista is low key the greatest wrestler turned actor ever. He said, I think that somebody like Paul uh, Thomas Anderson is going to have him in a real part, and he's going to look like a genius. A person, I say, as a person, Batista is generally immediately vulnerable when you meet him, and that's what I was excited about. This is something. Uh, this is someone who has the physical uh, trappings of someone who would play it big, but actually bring sensitivity to the role. So, when you're talking about greatest pro wrestlers uh, turned actors, you're talking about The Rock. You're talking about John Cena, Roddy Piper. Fair enough, maybe he's better than Hulk Hogan, but I mean, there's a lot of other guys who have gone from uh, playing roles in the ring to, to uh, being on the big screen. Steve Austin, Kevin Nash, there's a whole bunch of other guys. Do you believe that Dave Batista is on the top of that list? Let's start with Rob. No, not, it's not even like he's not even a consideration. Um, look, it's I, it's not a long list, okay? It's really yeah. not people that can that sort of can fill both roles. I would probably, yeah. for my vote, say Roddy Rowdy Roddy Piper. Um, you know, just for they live. Um, but he's done other, he's done other like bit roles. Like, and so I, I don't know. I, and I just like him. He has a lot of attitude that carries on the screen a lot of the time. Um, and it's not phony, you know, a lot of like, yeah. like, Hulk, like Hulk Hogan can't, does not, like he shrinks on a movie screen. Like he's not, he's, he's kind of a joke, you know, and the rock has kind of at least sustained a career. I don't think he's necessarily a great presence, but pe- people have gone to see his movies, whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I pro- personally would throw uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper in there as the best. But um, no, Dave Bautista is like, he's a part, he's a bit guy. He's a bit actor. He's, you know, he can fulfill comedic bits, comedic roles, um, you know, and I I guess he could be in an action movie, but I personally don't think he has the charisma to carry it. You know, he doesn't have uh, any kind of personality that that pops through the screen. So I, I kind of think it's a laughable thing to state that he's the, the best wrestler turned actor. Yeah, and be honest with you, if you're looking at like the big three right now, which will be like him, John Cena, and The Rock, I think John Cena is a better actor than both of them, to be completely honest with you, because John Cena has at least shown an ability that he can be both serious and comedic as well. Like he's mm-hmm. done pretty uh, well so far in his career doing both. And let's be honest, you're talking about guys with more charisma. I think Rock has more charisma as a wrestling personality, but I think John Cena may have more overall charisma. Do you, you agree with that, Cassie? Yeah, yeah. John Cena has proven at least he, he's, like, capable of, like, you know, leading. Has, has um, Batista done a film where he's kind of, like, the one carrying it? Yes, there I was. I mean, he's one, been in like yes, there was he's that been one in where 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 uh, he has to watch a, a little girl who like is a crime witness. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. Oh, uh, my spy! That fucking terrible shitty yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. that was him. He was the lead. That's a yeah. So basically, no. <laughs> he was in Stuber. Remember Stuber? 
that fucking uh, movie with the other jackass we just talked about in the last story that came out a couple years ago. And I'm, and I'm sorry, like just because you're you can you're you like you're you can execute a single scene does not mean you're a good actor. Like I'm sorry, it's just like that's that's a one off. And what is it, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, where he's he's with Ryan Gosling in the very beginning. And then you know oh, he's, he's not there. I don't remember. Yeah. I mean, but he, yeah, and he had a small part in. Uh, I'm, I'm imagine it's probably might be larger in Dune. I remember that he played like uh, the Baron's nephew. It was like a very small part in the first one. It might be expanded in the second one. But again, but see, uh, but see, Rick, he was gonna, he wasn't good enough to be Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa yeah. in the Dune movie wasn't. Correct me if I'm wrong. He literally dies. That's his. That's his yeah. sole purpose is to die. <laughs> so Dave well, Bautista yeah. couldn't even fill that role is to be somebody who's like, I'm gonna die for you so you don't die, Prince Guy or whatever. I don't know. Dude, yeah, so like, I, no, like I, I don't no, I don't think so. I mean I, I think Jason Momoa dies because he's supposed to defend uh, you know, right. the future uh, the future Paul Moab Um yeah. Batista was just very small part of, of this uh, massive film. He might be a larger part, but he's not. He's not the greatest. Uh, I mean, the greatest actor, wrestler turned uh, actor. Again, um, my standard is cast uh, cast uh, Batista in um, in a revival of My Fair Lady. Cast, cast him as cast him I mean, as King Lear. Cast, here's a yeah, realistic cast, question. Can Batista be be the lead in They Live? No, no. fucking way. No, no yeah. way. It would he wouldn't be able to come close to what Rod Piper was capable of doing in that role. And to me, that is like, you know, it's a John Carpenter flick. It's one of his best. Uh, honestly, I'd say it's like a top five. And Rod Piper makes that film, man. He really does. Like, you really do get behind his character, and he uh, he he makes it compelling. Like, it, and it's an interesting film because it's very serious in some ways, but it's also goofy in others. It's not an easy, like, role because it's like you have to be a bit versatile in it. And I mean, Dave Bautista has yet to really even truly prove himself. Like, until you're, yeah. you know, you, you, you're in a sink or swim situation acting wise, like, I really, this is just like people just shitting out of their mouth as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> And let's be honest, a lot of this has to do with Dave Bautista's political opinions. Obviously, he's a big, loud lefty on Twitter, so he's uh, the perfect actor in, in that Hollywood bubble. So that's probably another reason why we adore him so much, because he has all the right opinions, because it definitely ain't for any of the quality of his work that he's done so far. He's been, he's been, um, I guess, acceptable in uh, in ensemble parts, like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. And I, I don't want no glass onion. I mean, he wasn't good in that. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to think of what else he's done. He has not proven that he can carry a film. Uh, he's been he's been in these big films, but that's a, as um as a, as a as a supporting character as part of a larger film. I mean, believe me, I did not go see Dune three times because Dave Bautista was in it. I am sure there are a lot of people who did not see. Um, uh, other uh, was it the Guardians of the Galaxy because he was in it. So yeah. um, first, uh, and I'm sure even um, Glass Onion, uh, I'm sure people did not say, "Oh, well, you know, it has uh, Dave Bautista in it." So obviously, we're going to rush out to see it. So uh, no, he, he's he's not. But cat cast him in something that that could show range. R the Rock or Dwayne Johnson, um, he at least has been able to kind of transition between big action and kind of more family-friendly comedies. Uh, the same with, um, I mean, I'm not a John Cena fan at all, but he's, he's also been able to at least be part of uh, more more films and his name is more recognizable. Uh, but I, I don't see how he, anyone could say that he's uh, the, the best. And if he's, still, if he's so good, Ryan, why did you kill him off in Glass Onion? Why didn't you keep him alive bring him back for the inevitable sequel and make him uh, Benoit Blanc's uh, mistress. I don't know. I mean, I, you know, it, it, it's a nice, it, it, it's maybe a compliment from his director, but it, it's not a realistic statement. He, uh, he can't open, he can't open a film. Rock, the, uh, Dwayne Johnson has a better shot of opening a film. Even John Cena has a better shot of opening the film than uh, Dave Bautista. Listen to me. Okay. Bruce Willis in his current state, is a better leading man than Dave Batista. Okay. 
<laughs> Done. Yikes. Ouch. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I don't, I'll just put, put it this way. Take anything Ryan Johnson says with a very, very uh, small grain of salt. I think that's the best way to approach anything uh, revolving uh, Ryan Johnson there. So uh, any final thoughts on this one before we move on over to our closer of the night? It, it sounds kind of like he's trying to get more press. And like you said, he's big lefty, so they're going to support each other. I mean, that's one of the upsides of the collectivism, the collectivism that comes from the far ends of the spectrum, particularly yeah. on the left, you know. Uh, I don't think I can name a Dave Batista film that, you know, I would go see for just his role. So, or just a Dave Batista film. <laughs> well, I mean, like they have a, like there's always going to be a good spot for like strong, like muscle heavy men in films, you know. Just it, and I don't know, they're not going to be particularly. Oh. I don't know. Um, they're not going to be particularly demanding, I guess. So he was in Army of the Dead, which was one of the worst movies. What was the the oh that came was out? Was that the Zack Snyder long. movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. it was terrible. <laughs> Apparently, Drax here thinks you like Vince Russo, maybe a younger <laughs> Vince Russo. Um, this is going to show my ignorance. I don't know who Vince Russo is. Didn't didn't he run D WCW or something? I don't yeah, know. he was like the head writer during the Attitude Era and jumped to WCW. So yeah, I think I think I, I, more if they they tried to put some variation in it, like they put him in like that kid movie where he's like the spy or something, and they spy. did the same thing to the Rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they um and then they put him in the superhero movie. I mean, like it, it would be. Uh, I mean, like all the wrestlers that I can name have had that same pattern, and it's like it would be cuter i think if he it, it would be more there would be more to it his claim if 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 it wasn't such a like um like a clear pattern like they're just trying to make you like him but you don't actually have any good reason or like they're there you need more evidence still to they have to invent reasons for you to like this individual <laughs> Well, he almost all of his roles are ensemble p pieces. Whether it's Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. you have Glass Onion, you have the Army mm -hmm. of the Dead, and you know the the sort of spinoff that they did with that. And so uh -huh. it's it's him kind of trying to stand out amidst a lot of other faces. And when that doesn't occur, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, well, it's become a quantity over quality thing, definitely. Especially in the Guardians, because I mean, Chris Pratt stood out far more than uh, he did, and they were both kind of, I don't know, I'd say relatively unknown because Chris Pratt was in that uh, Parks and Rec. But I mean, as movie stars, they go kind of started at the same level when that film came out, and Chris Pratt blew up to be a much bigger star than Batista did. Uh, yeah, well, do you and... even remember? Do you, do you remember him in Thor: Love and Thunder? Batista? Either one. Oh, yeah. the beginning oh. with with the Guardians. I mean, yeah. Do you remember? Remember him? No. Did anything stand out? <laughs> no. Well, I mean, like the—I don't think the Guardians, the Guardians of the Galaxy is probably his most like gross, like income role or whatever. But the character is itself it it irritates me because he says like his whole family murdered or whatever, and then like halfway through the like I mean half of the second movie he's just kind of sitting there like making fun of Mantis or something too. So mm -hmm. it's like this seems weird. And so. even in Glass Onion, I mean, was I mean, was he a big? I mean, what was he? Did he do anything that stood out? I mean, it's, it's no. I mean, maybe it's just uh, Ryan Johnson trying to be nice. I, I have no, uh, I have no way of knowing. I, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, it's probably just kind of like, oh, compliment the people that worked on your, your, your show. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you really believe that he's one of the best wrestling actors, then give him an actual role. That proves that you have enough faith in him to to carry a film. If you don't do that, I mean, what you're saying is worthless to me. Okay, I yeah, haven't have play Hamlet's Batista. Ghost. I want I want to see him play like I want I want to see him play Shylock in The Merchant of Venice. So uh, that very would be interesting. At, at, at least at, well, that he's a good actor. Uh, no, you, you only Jewish actors could play uh, Jewish characters. Sorry. Um, but, the rule. No, I, yeah, they're not hard to find, Rich. 
They're not hard to find. Especially in Hollywood. Yeah, I know, yeah. It's like you just throw a rock and you might hit one. Roll. But I mean, at, le at, least, at, at least, at least, at, at least, yes, I gave him a part where all he has to do is just use his voice, uh, you know, <laughs> playing the ghost in Hamlet's uh, in Hamlet. So uh, at least, at least he could do that. I'm assuming. I think to to test his range out, you'd need more more monologue, though. So I think getting your your witnessing your daughter running away with you know your cursed enemy and being you know hit up by lawyers for a pound of flesh and stuff and you know i think it would be kind of well, no, I mean, ju ju yeah. just cast him as henry higgins there i mean he i mean he that's a master <laughs> of the english language right there i mean even in the in pygmalion or my fair lady and let's let's see how he does and kind of to answer okay, your yeah. question, can we stop making jokes about fucking Shakespeare and fucking classical <laughs> English? He's not, he can barely speak of like a, an Americanized <laughs> modern version of English. So, like, let's stop putting the. He would like, be Eliza. He could play Eliza. No, he, a gender swapped. You remember the last action hero where he, where like Arnold is in black, it's in black and white and he's like playing mm -hmm. Hamlet or whatever. And he like lights his cigar. And that's the kind <laughs> of Shakespeare that Batista could play. That's about it. Oh, oh um, I mean, Let's I, lo I looked up. On this man, who, uh, please. Can we uh, move uh, on to the next topic? <laughs> I'm making it all uncomfortable. Uh, I, no, I, I, I looked, feel bad. I, I looked on up. A uh, who Vince Russo is, and um, I suppose the mo the the one I get the most is uh, Joe Latruglio. Uh, I do apparently look a lot like him, so he would be the person who would play me in a biopic. Yeah, good luck with that one. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and give our uh, link in the chat to uh, Mr. Orange Hat here because Orange Hat had to drop out through some technical uh, issues. So if you haven't subscribed to Orange Hat, there's his link uh, in the chat for you guys to subscribe to right now. Um, keeping an eye on the Golden Globes right now, uh, still nothing really happening. Of course, they're saving the two big awards for the, the end of the night. Uh, the White Lotus is winning a bunch of awards. I don't know if anyone watches that show. I don't really watch TV anymore, but apparently that's winning a bunch of awards. So there's that, I guess. Uh, we're still waiting for the best picture ones. Those are the only ones we really care about now Ooh, at this point. Uh, Zendaya so. won. There you go. Yeah, we, we mentioned that like 40 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't here 40 minutes ago. That's not fair. You were literally here when I mentioned it. <laughs> I oh, really? I don't, I, I don't remember. Yeah. Yes. Re re rewind the tape. He was definitely here when I mentioned it. When full <laughs> boomer I'll, I'll on take, us I'll right take there. Your, I'll, well, no, no. Um, I've been having the slight internet connection issues as well, so I might have missed that part. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll use that as your excuse for tonight, so get ready for that. And yeah, uh, outside of that, uh, people are still uh, freaking out online, panicking about WWE. But before we go and mention that, let's go ahead and shift over to our closer tonight, which is uh, someone who I think everyone may have liked at some point during his life, uh, certainly not over the last 10, uh, 15 years. And Mr. Adam Sessler, who went absolutely um, postal on Twitter saying, uh, fuck gamers, I'm not a gamer, gamers suck, they're the worst of the worst. This is a guy who's been in video game journalism for the last 30 years of his life and has made a following off of being on tech TV, being on G4. He was one of the only two uh, G4 originals they brought back in the revival of G4 uh, last year. And um, I don't know what, what to really say about Adam Sessler at this point because it feels like you could say, yeah, Trump broke him. In all honesty, he's probably been a douchebag for at least 15 uh, years now because when he got fired the first time around, there was rumors about uh, his drug issues, especially with cocaine, and that was one of the leading factors of him getting the boot there. There was one uh, the, uh, one panel or event that they did live when people were accusing him of being coked up during that whole thing. So this guy's been kind of a mess for a while, but because he's always been attached with G4 in some capacity, he, they've always given him sort of a pass. Uh, here, but uh, no anymore. G4 is dead, and he wants you to know that he does not give a shit about gamers. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and just show you a, a few tweets here because he really did just go on an absolute tangent uh, against gamers in, in general here. I mean, you can go back to like the last 48 hours. He's literally just losing his fucking mind here. But um, I'm going to go to a YouTuber here called uh, RG, uh, RGT85 here. 
Let me see. Can I actually uh, see this t tweet or is it uh, tweet? Okay. So I mean, this the whole thing really kind of like started here. It says uh, Adam Sessler answered a question from this one Twitter user that says, "Why do you th uh, think that uh, your person let's say, let's say why do you say ah, why do they all think you personally ran G4 and made all the financial decisions?" He says that I have a theory on this. It's because uh, gamers are small dick, uh, sympathetic uh, challenge. Uh, sorry, sympathetic. Uh, Zan Appleby challenged uh, social scabies. Sorry about that. I butchered that one. But so then, of course, uh, the YouTuber here asked him, since I have a theory on this, Adam Sessler is a fucking clown. So, of course, <laughs> Adam Sessler responds to this by saying, cool theory, bro. I'll take it under consideration while I'm explaining why gamers are the pubic lice of society. Maybe I'll wear a, a red nose. So this goes on uh, over and over again. He's just like going after anyone who possibly talks about him. Uh, even Hobbs says that you still suck at games no matter how many Nazis you punch. He says, <laughs> I suck at games when he did. So he goes back to the guy he slammed the first time around. Who He goes and says, so you're calling yourself a uh, micro dick pup, uh, pubic lice, and you are, uh, so are you self-projecting or are you just not a gamer anymore? Just checking here, champ. Because obviously, like I said, this is a guy who has 30 years of history in video games. He says, just you and yours. I was never, I said, never was a gamer myself. Don't overthink this, bozo. So then, of course, uh, he responds by saying, you worked in the gaming industry for 20 plus years, but you didn't play games, so you're either a fraud or a liar. Which one are you going to pick here? He says, then Adam responds, never said I didn't play games. He says, I'm uh, replaying Jedi Fallen Order right now. Seriously, don't strain yourself putting this together. Semantics isn't good YouTube material. So keep in mind, he just said that he was never a gamer himself, and now all of a sudden he's playing video games. So he doesn't even keep in touch with his own insults. He says, uh, strain, uh, none whatsoever. Just trying to figure out what puts you in the category that plays games but isn't a gamer because uh, the math ain't mathing. And then Adam says, bro, sounds like that's a you problem. I know who, who I am. So I think mean, that's where kind of the, the whole thing teared off. But you can just see here, he's just responding to like one person after another. Um, it says that, uh, let me see here. It, it says, uh, he goes on about Elon Musk for some real reason. Here's another post for him. He said, things that I've learned today. They love uh, paying for Twitter. They need me to be one of them. They're at the uh, center of all things at all times. They afford me of my irrelevance uh, repeatedly uh, in great volume. So. He seems to be having a pretty fine day on Twitter here. I think. Was there any more um, uh, uh, tweets here about gamers? He just goes off on like pretty much everyone. He's talking about Musk and Nazis and the fact that Twitter is allowing people to buy blue check marks for eight dollars an hour. Like he's just going on these completely unhidden rants all over um, social media. Look, uh, me, uh, I believe me, Cassie, and uh, well, Rob, were you on our G4 retrospective? Were you on that show? I was there. Yeah, I know Nerdigans was there, but we, we did uh, one couple, uh, a few weeks back. CW definitely was there. We did one a few weeks back. We were talking about, you know, G4 Tech TV and what was it like during that time back in, like, the mid-2000s where G4 was really at its peak. And Adam used to be known as a guy who, you know, had some uh, journalism uh, background. He got into gaming journalism. He was pretty knowledgeable about that. He started doing uh, X Play, where they started doing like these quirky like video game reviews that people found entertaining, and that's where he got his popularity. Then they decided they were going to switch the format back to being a serious video game show, and it never really recovered uh, after that. When the format changed, people stopped watching. Then he lost his job there. He tried to do um, what was the revision? I believe he was there for a short period of time. Tried to do his own gaming outlet outside of G4. Um, wasn't really as successful as his G4 run. They brought him back. This guy's been a miserable pick, prick for, for fucking years. I mean, this is pretty much exactly what he's become uh, over the last few years. And everything you're seeing on Twitter where he's rooting for his own family members to die because they support Trump and Republicans and things of that nature. And now he's going after essentially his bread and brother, which is the gamer base, saying that gamers are fucking pubic lights. And it is getting to the point where even people who were fans of him are, like, calling him out, like, dude, what the fuck are you doing now uh, at this point? Uh, I'll start with Rob. What do you think of Adam Sessler's just complete public meltdown on his own uh, base here on Twitter? Yeah, I mean, I, I really don't have much of a relationship with the guy. I, I would check out G4 occasionally, um, you know, like when I was a teenager. Because, you know, it was a, like it was, a, it was pretty cool to, to see um, a channel dedicated to video games and video gamers and cheat codes and just just different aspects of um playing video games but 
Um, the guy seems like he's, I don't know. I don't know if it's an ideological bent. I don't know if it's um, just projection in terms of how he views the term gamers. But it's mm-hmm. like, I, you know, there's all kinds of people, as I'm sure everyone here knows, that plays video games of every class, creed, race, you know, every, you know, every culture. So it's not, it has nothing to do. I mean, he, it seems like he's attacking a certain set of behaviors more than actual people. So, yeah. I, you know, but, but again, obviously he's taking the bait on every single reply uh, to the point where it's just like, you're, you know, he started to, to, you know, cycle. Yeah, it- Hey, keep in mind, just real quick, remember when uh, Frost did that whole rant that killed G4 last year? He was the one seal clapping in, in the background with everything that she was saying, which pretty much killed the network and ended up losing his job for a second time at, at G4. So. But, like, what is his thing? Is he like a male feminist? Is he Does he just hate himself? He's, does he hate he's anything? A, he's a miserable liberal pig. That's really what he, yeah. what he is, to sum it up. So. Yeah. He's a, he's a miserable lefty who probably has likely has a drug problem. He's one of these guys who's like, yeah, I'm going to show a picture of myself uh, hitting boxing gloves because I'm going to go out there and punch Nazis, man. It's like, you live in San Francisco. Shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> what, what Nazis are you going to be punching in, in the near future? Like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Uh, Cassie. Oh, no, I was just going to say real quick. These are the people that really need to understand that Twitter and, and being online is not real life. So like, you're not doing anything. You're just, you're really, you're just making more of an ass out of yourself, which again, I know something about. So Mm -hmm. please just, just stop. Yeah. I agree. Cassie, you point. spoke about this a little. I was gonna say, yeah, you spoke about this a little earlier today. Just kind of reiterate your thoughts here about Adam Sessler's a uh, complete another downfall of his life. Yeah, um, Adam Sessler has no self control. Uh, like me, you know, over the holiday, kind of had a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, it was in my feelings. And I determined that I was in my feelings. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to allow Twitter to recognize that I'm in my feelings. So I'm going to delete this app, take like five or so days off, and then come back when I'm feeling better, which is what I did. Because I don't want anybody on Twitter to know that, to see me at my weakest, like period. Like, you know, it's all about, uh, you know, like basically your own self-control. And when it comes to like social life, especially with people that are, constantly trying to be at your neck uh you don't want to be involved in a situation when you're at your weakest so that's why you take yourself out of the situation um adam sessler yeah. every time he's in his fucking feelings he's on tweet arguments on, on twitter all the time and you know people constantly antagonize this dude because at some point he's gonna get butthurt about it and he's gonna go on the twitter tirade and because they know that they they fuck with you all the time and that's what happens like people just constantly uh, say nasty things at him, and deservingly so, because he gives them the time of day. I mean, this is clout chasing, and he's a clout chaser in his own right as well. But um, when it comes to this whole situation, uh, a lot of people who aren't gamers have kind of just tried to devolve what it means to be a gamer. Like, there is this dumbass person that worked for, like, Microsoft, uh, who's, like, she, like, does some streaming on the side, uh, you know, this is a person that's employed by Microsoft and is involved with the Xbox community, whatever, in some way. And she was the one that was saying, like, if you play video games, you're a gamer. If you watch people play video games, you're a gamer. Uh, you know, if you talk about video games, you're a gamer. No, like, you have to actually play video games and, like, be into, like, video games to to be considered a gamer. So, like, to be kind of like, it, it's like a shaky term now that, that people are trying to redefine. Yeah to to be convenient because unfortunately like with gaming being the biggest form of entertainment right now you have a lot of um wannabes that pretend to be gamers to be involved in this industry and gaming has been hijacked by um a lot of these people that aren't into video games aren't passionate at all and have absolutely nothing to contribute and with that it has you know degraded and and kind of fucked up the quality of gaming now, Adam Sessler, he's been involved in gaming for a long time, and he considers himself not a gamer. And it's like, dude, whether you like it or not, you've been involved in this industry for a really long time. And from what we've seen, you, you pl- do play video games. You're saying you're playing, I think it was the new Star Wars game or some shit like that. Like, clearly, yeah. you do play video games. You're a gamer, but you hate it. Like, you hate the culture. You hate the concept of it. And you're still fucking here. So it's like all this shit that you're calling everyone else, you're a part of it too, whether you like it or not. That's just 
you know, the L that you're going to have to eat if you want to spout all this nonsense and actually halfway believe any of it. So he's just a clown. Uh, he's always in his feelings. He's one of those, like, <laughs> like bitch-ass <laughs> left, leftist maniacs that just constantly on their own little tirades and stuff. Uh, he's all a part of, of all that woke shit. And honestly, you know, uh, I will say, like, leftist men, they're, like, some of the biggest losers I've ever seen. And they prove it almost every chance that they get. And Adam Sessler is no different. Uh, he's blocked a bunch of people that I, I know in the gaming community, some of which have never really, like, they never do anything, like, nasty. Like, they're really, like, just chilled back people, like um, Eric Hetz for the win. Uh, RGT85, he's most of the time really chill. And he just, like, the fact that he actually, like, you know, when Adam it was pretty cool, but um, even he doesn't really get out of line. So the fact that uh, Adam Sessler kind of just like went in on him, and and I don't know if you saw this uh this this post that it's a Gundam put up, but he actually screen capped like someone like kind of giving Adam Sessler just simple simply fair criticism, like you know I used to be a fan of you, kind of fell off the train when you kind of went on these like um, political tirades, but um I still appreciate you for introducing me to Dark Souls. Hope you get like the you know the uh the help that you need or the peace that that you clearly need in your life and adam sessler just said something really nasty in return it's just like damn like that he just he just wants he's just a miserable human being he proves it every chance that he gets and he just wants everyone else to be miserable too so yeah he's, he's a miserable piece of shit i just want the print out of alex Terrace. like i didn't even when i read that the first time i thought that he was literally swinging in, in the closet that i read the context and i was like oh yeah that's that that one even though i did say that's likely was going to happen with adam at this point when his life and his career with the way things are going uh downfall here but yeah i mean the dude is just such a miserable prick and he's not going to change so i mean it's like well how else do you think do we think this whole story is going to end here so uh, anyone... Dude, mis being miserable there's a correlation here uh baldness and misery you want want to talk about that society i'm just saying i mean i don't have a crack, a crack problem like adam sessler so i mean i'm not gonna you know <laughs> sit here and say that i can tell from experience but well, well, i even have the, the the little uh brand thing here hold on let me pull this up just real quick hmm. gentlemen what brings me to my next point don't smoke crack <laughs> That's right. It's important yep. to if anyone knows about yeah. crack, it's Lawrence Taylor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Crack is whack. Crack is whack. Uh, any, any final uh, thoughts here about the, the whole Adam Sessler uh, debacle here before we get ready to wrap things up? Well, uh, first, first, first uh, I'm going to say that I've never heard of Adam Sessler because <laughs> I, I don't play uh, video games. Like I said, Donkey Kong was probably the last thing I ever played in my life. Um, and uh, is that is that his real face? Is that is that his, is that his real face? <laughs> Uh, I ask because he he looks like the like that uh, Cajun uh, farmer from Waterboy. I mean, I actually mm -hmm. thought that farmer was friend, character. yeah, farmer. Hey, friend. Yeah, you, he looks you like think that. that's bad. You reference you the same bad. movie that we saw the clip of. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you think that's no. bad, you should see his shiny bald head. No, oh, no, that's, that's what he bad. looks like. Uh, I mean, that I mean, that's what it looks like to me. Um, I don't understand this uh, concept of having to answer every person that that says something um, even remotely negative about you. Uh, th th this man looks like he's having, and uh, I don't know if it's an exact parallel, but he seems to be having sort of a, a Kanye West uh, thing where where he's going nuts. He, he's he's you know he's losing it here in front of all of us. And, and nobody seems to be able to to rein him in. He reminds me of one of my favorite uh, memes, where where it's uh, Sophia uh, Portillo from the Golden Girls, and, and she just uh, it says, "You're nuts." I mean, the, the man yeah. seems to be having some sort of a breakdown here. Um, I, I I generally worry about his his, his health. I mean, what, I don't know why he's going after people who who were in the past supportive of him or whatever he covered in, in regards to, to gaining. Uh, I'm I'm puzzled by by this sort of um, response. I mean, if if um, if you if you don't have uh, if you don't have to respond to all your critics, but 
he seems uh, hell bent on responding to everyone. Why? What is the point? Uh, does he think he's going to convert anyone? Does he think he's going to change people's minds by by trashing them? Uh, I, I'm puzzled. Though. I, I I would you know, being someone outside the the gaming uh, community, um, I, I would say this man is, is seems to be having some kind of uh, breakdown. Take take the take the Twitter away from him. Uh, tell him to take some some days to rest. Don't bash the people that have been, uh, I guess, supportive of you, or at least the very minimum, see saw you as, as a sort of uh, reference or a source of information about something you enjoy. Uh, just, Mr. Sessler, you know, just uh, get help. Or, or, or it, lo it looks like you you need you need help, uh, and uh, you know, you know, t you know, take care of yourself. <laughs> that's that, that's my only yeah, comment. I don't know who one. this man is. I don't know who this man is. Um, it's of, of no interest. Just why answer back? Why answer back? Uh, okay. I'm going to make sure I got the right one here. Is this the right one? Yep. So uh, one of the followers, uh, this is actually from last year. This was part of his recent rambling here. But he says, oh, Adam, I am legit. I was a follower of you back then. It says, when, I, when you went weird, I finally unfollowed you after your political tantrums got boring. He said, you still get credit for introducing me to Demon Souls way back in the day. I hope you find some peace someday. Then he responded by saying, I hope you eat shit and puke. And then, of Jeez. course, he responded by saying, uh, Merry Christmas. So, yeah. Uh, Adam, Adam's an angry little man. He's, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, he's, I mean, just reading that, he's, he's, uh, the, the person, uh, uh, re replying or quote tweeting him, he's not saying anything horrendous. He's just saying, you know, you, you uh, criticism. Was some, yes. I mean, you're saying that it was someone I admired. You seem to have gone off the deep end. Uh, and his reply seems to have proven that he's, uh, at the very least, a nasty man, at the very worst, having serious uh, mental health breakdown. I don't know if that's the case. I'm, I'm not a therapist or an analyst, but why, why, why? Why fight against people who who are apparently not really going after you? I, I didn't see anything there that was vicious, uh, but you respond that way. I, I don't know. the whole The whole thing seems to be uh, someone who is not uh, in full control of himself. Again, I'm not there, but it just seems bizarre to me as an outsider, well, someone he, who he knows thinks nothing that about it, He seems to think that everyone else is wrong that he and he's totally like fine. Like you could tell he's a self self-absorbed prick. Oh what he, gave that away? Confused, though. I will say that. Like mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, between this and the other shit with limited run games, I was thoroughly entertained <laughs> on Twitter. But like yeah. Purple Tinker being back on Twitter I just because that's what I've been looking at. I'm just like blown out of my mind right now because Purple Tinker was off of Twitter yesterday, and now they're back online trying to clear everything up, and they're making it so much worse. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to, I had to put over what life. Alex said. Uh, even Jesus rested on the seventh day. <laughs> <laughs> Me, uh, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna. Yeah. <laughs> what I All right, is then. Like, seriously, so something is going on with Adam. I think he's having, he's probably having a mental breakdown. Something going on. I don't know if it's. Well, like, if he's a, having one, he's been like, having one for month. 15 yeah, he, years. He has so. one monthly. Like he's always having a mental breakdown. I just think that he really believes that there's nothing wrong with him and that everyone else is wrong. Like this is the type of dude that wants his family members who don't have the same political beliefs as him to die. Like that's how low of a human being he is. He has no tolerance for anyone else. Um, he thinks that the world should apparently revolve around him and it doesn't. And he finds that out apparently every chance he gets and his little tirades on Twitter, I guess, are because of that. Yeah. One of two things. I either he's uh, either he's having some kind of uh breakdown and is for some reason kind of broadcasting it or he's a particularly nasty individual who is uh, thoroughly both. selfish and yeah. uh, I, mean, I don't know if it's both but one or the other to me because there's no reason to respond to me the, the this people is... who've been yeah uh, go ahead no i just want to say this is how a tribalist acts this is somebody that is so dedicated to their team or their side or their point of view 
that it's so like I'm, I'm gonna destroy you because you're a cretin and you're beneath me and you know that that's exactly yeah. the kind of energy that emanates from those those tweets and it's like you know you're nothing you're you're this thing I've decided you are a gamer, which is the worst thing you could possibly be. And so um, I'm I'm better and I know more than you. But it's it's just really ugly behavior, especially for somebody who used to make a career out of you know a uh, video game. So it's just really sad. Yeah, it's sad, but that's his reality. And you know, like I said, those people aren't going to change. So he's going to stew being the person that he is until he eventually either croaks from uh, vaccination shots or just has fucking massive coronary yelling at people on Twitter. So uh, rest in peace, uh, Bozo, uh, Adam Sessler. You won't be missed, something like that. You notice that Morgan Webb has been, like, dead silent over, like, the last, like, couple of years. Like, she doesn't even post on social media anymore. It's like, you ain't heard a word from her in, like, three years. Meanwhile, Adam Sussler is just doing more damage to his reputation every single day that goes by, so. Well, Morgan Webb is too busy adulting, whereas Adam Sussler seems to struggle mm -hmm. with that quite often. Like I said, lay, lay low. They just, just lay low and shut up. Yep. All right, then. Well, we've come to the end of our show here, so let's go ahead and give everyone here uh, a proper uh, outro, give you guys time to promote yourselves and put anything else you guys come got coming up here. We're going to start with Mr. Rob Motto here, the guy on top. So uh, what do you got coming up, Rob? We're going to find more of you. Yep. So um, that's my Twitter down there. Um, I like to talk about movies. I have two movie reviews that are coming out tomorrow. It's also my 34th birthday, so that's exciting, right. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, made it past the Jesus year, so we're good. Um, I'm not <laughs> you live longer than Tupac, so that's right. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, I'm going to be doing uh, those two reviews. Those will be out tomorrow, and then I'm going to be moving on to some John Woo movie reviews uh, later this week. And then I am watching the uh, new Tom Hanks movie this weekend, and um, I'll review it on Monday. So, uh, check out my Twitter, and that's pretty much where I'm going to be posting the reviews. So, check it out. All right, then. Let's move over to our other good buddy, Cole Classic Cage. What do you got coming up here? Well, um, if at any time you want to talk to me, hit me up on uh, Twitter, on YouTube. Um, I think so. Next um, film, watch along, I'm going to do, I believe, is American Pie, since that was the request from a channel member. So I actually never seen American Pie. So that's probably going to be like early next week, if not like this weekend. We'll see. But um, I'll definitely have, like, give a heads up on when that's going to happen. So if you want to watch the movie with me, uh, that'll be fun. Uh, just sub to my channel, uh, Cult Classic Cage. I always got something going on. Uh, we got the Too Real for Feels podcast next week. But, um, yeah, I've been keeping tabs on what's been going on regarding the whole limited run situation. And it's actually cool because the individual who did unfortunately get fired from Limited Run, she was actually in my uh, live stream chat earlier today. And she was like, yeah, I really appreciate uh, your coverage on this. And she thought that my coverage is really good. That's uh, that's awesome. Um, wishing her the best, Carolyn. She, you know, she's definitely keeping tabs on what's going on. And she does appreciate the support from the gaming community. So that's awesome. All right, then moving over to our good buddy C.S. Johnson. I know you got something that you want to promote. Uh, let me ask you just, just a quick question here. With um, all, all these like outlets kind of like burning their bridge as far as like the comic book world goes, do you feel like you have to step your game up by providing a, a more a better alternative to the books that you're writing? Um, well, I've been I I've been doing it for like ten years, so I um, I'm very proud of my work. And I do have a, a, my Kickstarter. I decided to push it back till April just because I'm waiting on some of the the variant prints that I'm gonna well, I'm, I've been like getting done. And I have I got some of the early drafts of it earlier today, and it looks so pretty, and um, like so so pretty. <laughs> nice. So yes. Um, but yes. Yeah, so come and. Follow my, but yeah, come and follow my Kickstarter and come and follow my YouTube channel. I actually have a few. Um, I did a live stream where I showed a couple of the first pages and of my my comic. So, yep, I'm just I'm just here. I'm <laughs> working on making more entertainment for you guys and trying to 
stay awake half the time too, you know. <laughs> that too. That that would be a plus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, like back in the day they had cocaine. I'm just sleep deprived. So mm -hmm. <laughs> just get your coffee, you'll be fine. Oh. Several well, high cups of coffee. Uh yeah. I stick to tea right now, so that's why you're sleepy. No, I'm playing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Nerdigans, I think you posted somewhere about 20 videos as we did the show tonight. So uh, what do you got coming up? <laughs> um, Obviously, you can check out all my manga content and also, in the case of Soul Leveling, news content on um, my YouTube channel, Nerdigans Inc. Um, I don't know what's going on with Bounding because I have not gotten to do new stories um, since the whole thing with Spencer went down. So I don't know what's going on um, with that. So, <laughs> so all my news stories for right now, I'm just going to do on my channel until I hear back. I'm <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of a, a, a tough time right now. So yeah. know, give us some patience with the bounding and the comic stuff for next. Yeah, it's very weeks. understandable. I finally got, I got a really cool exclusive picture though from, um, from Sakaki, the manga of uh, Tokyo Underworld for the, uh, interview that I did that I submitted. It took a while. It took some back and forth, but I got exclusive um, uh, original illustration for the interview. Like this is not one that's not even on um, Manga Plus, you know, where you can read Tokyo Underworld. So yeah. this is going to be like exclusive to Bounding. So I worked hard getting that. So <laughs> hopefully that gets up really soon. And also the interview that I did with Sakaki is the first interview that Sakaki has done with a Western um, uh, um, uh, publication. So this is like, I worked my butt off getting this interview done too. <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm trying to get more, well, while things are going down, I'm going to try and get more interviews with more, um, with some more of the mangaka I am friends with. So I'm working on trying to get one with uh, uh, Yuji Kaku, you know, the manga of Hell's Paradise, uh, Jigga Karaku. That's the next one I'm really trying for. It's going to be hard, but I am trying. Um, but anyways, uh, but yeah, um, I'm probably going to cover more censorship stories that are going on, especially with uh, the whole thing with Ayakashi Triangle. People are not happy that even in Japan that one is censored. I knew it was coming, but yeah, I got confirmation Um from uh, Ayakashi Triangle, not Ayakashi Triangle, I'm sorry, Anime Reddit in regards to that. I'm telling you, manga and anime Reddit are actually pretty based. They're not as uh, crunchy as a good chunk of the rest of Reddit. <laughs> Thank God. Mm. <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> they have been chasing out the tourists like no tomorrow. Yeah. But um, other than that, um, I'm just going to be up around and around on Twitter um, uh, getting more stories and scoops and I've been very active on my discord as well. Um, and that's where I've been posting a lot of, uh, scoops that I've been getting to boot as well. And been chatting about theories and all that. So stay tuned. Cause we'll, I'll be here of course, next Tuesday. If we're doing something tomorrow, I'll probably be here too. It just depends on what you're doing, Jacob. All right. Then, then our last but not least, our good buddy, Rick, he saved the best uh, for you. So what do you got coming up? Uh, surprisingly very little um i'm still uh, working through uh, my uh, babylon review uh now that the banshees of uh, whatever uh is a musical comedy winner uh, i'm going to see if i can watch the link so i could uh, review it and who knows maybe it'll be back uh, i'm also going to uh, i already got my ticket for uh Thursday to watch uh, Plane. That's going to be the, the movie that I will be uh, reviewing. And I'm maybe hoping to sneak in um, one or both of the ones that you guys are, are going to talk about on Monday. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Trying to fin oh, trying to finish up my uh, Megan review. And uh, surprisingly enough, I'm talking it up to a lot of my coworkers, encouraging them to to, to go see it. And, and that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just trying to keep up with the um, with uh, the reviews and, and yeah, just th that, that's, that's pretty much it. You know, my, my life is pretty quiet. So, which is a nice change of pace. Now that uh, mm -hmm. January's here, I won't have to worry too much about trying to watch as many screeners. Uh, but now I might also watch uh, Argentina 1985 since I do have a screener for that. So that, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Then. And then bring it back over here and let you guys know what we got coming up. 
Um, tomorrow there will be a black pill stream. Uh, John is going to be back for that stream tomorrow. I should be there. I'm going to ask a couple of people who uh, might be able to join us tomorrow. I have no idea exactly what we're going to talk about, but uh, like I said, this whole WWE story is continuing to blow up, so we might actually have to do something about that. And we'll talk about a couple of other things, maybe the Golden Globes as well, and a few other stories in the world of entertainment. So, um, yeah, we do have that uh, coming up this week. Um, Monday, um, actually uh, Thursday, I'm going to be on uh, Talk to Tuesday with uh, Comics Division. So we're going to be uh, doing that stream on Comics Division's uh, YouTube stream on Thursday night. So catch me there. Uh, next Monday, obviously, we're doing three movies next week. I'm going to be reviewing uh, House Party. Rob's going to be doing A Man Called Otto. And then um, Rick is going to be doing uh, Plane, which is Gerard Butler movie. So three different movies next week. And then next Tuesday night, we'll be here uh, for the next episode of the Barroom Podcast. Who knows what the hell we'll talk about next week. It looks like it's going to get a bit crazy here. Um I don't think we'll stick around to figure out. Uh, actually, it just happened. Apparently, the Fablemans just won Best Drama uh, Picture at the Golden Globe. So that's what they gave the the big award of the night to. So uh, hooray, Steven Spielberg, for winning a movie kind of about himself. Uh, any, any thoughts yes. there before we uh, sign off? Yeah, really Spielberg on movie. Spielberg. Yeah, Spielberg on Spielberg. I, I, I'm I'm disappointed that somehow people think that uh, a Steven Spielberg biopic made by Steven Spielberg is, is somehow a great uh, great film. It, it, it's just uh, I, I saw it and I'm going. This is the the biopic about himself. Uh, bless him. I mean, I have nothing against Steven Spielberg, but why the 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 fable man? Uh, it, it, uh, you know, I mean, it's it, yeah, no, because I mean, look at it, it's competition was Avatar 2, Elvis R, and Top Gun Maverick. So, I mean, yeah. I would I would put at least two of those movies above The Fableman. I mean, it's oh, the problem. Yeah. I mean, The Fableman is just a very trite, sort of like precious recreation of Spielberg's own childhood. So, it just yeah. feel, it, it's it's like you're too close to the material for it to resonate on it on you know something deeper um and and exactly. spielberg as a teenager spielberg as a teenager was so insufferable i would have wanted to beat up that twat you know what i mean like he was so <laughs> fucking annoying hey uh, you, they're being anti-semitic and it's just like i it's just like so overly stated and it's just like okay whatever dude why can't we just have the just ignore me bullies while I focus on my movie making. And, you know, it, it just, it had to be this pronounced statement. So, and, and it, it's fine. It is, He's earned the right to do it, but I'm, you know, I have also the right to say it's a It is shit. a default biopic about himself. Yeah. It, it just smacks of uh, self-aggrandizement and sheer narcissism because people who know uh, Steven Spielberg's story know that this is basically his life story. I mean, he's open about how The Greatest Show on Earth inspired him to be a filmmaker. He's talked about how he, um, you know, he experienced anti-Semitism. He talked about, uh, you know, I mean, even the the movies that uh, not Steven Spielberg. Sammy Fableman was making when he was in the Boy Scouts. Uh, those are the movies that he made. No one takes away from 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 his uh, abilities, but this is uh, I I you know this is not like uh, what was it? Other people have, have said it's like uh, not like, but it's reminiscent of uh, of Belfast mm. or, or uh, Roma. Roma. Yeah. But at least those were fictional characters. Uh, they uh, they might have been inspired, but it didn't cover like the whole breadth of his life. If he had uh, if he had ended the movie not with uh, him talking to John Ford, but with uh, maybe uh, ended when he directed Night Gallery and Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford. To, I just read about yeah. that today. By the yeah. way, I wanted when to she tell you. yeah when she wanted to <laughs> you know if, if it had ended with Joan Crawford slapping uh, Sammy Fableman for trying to direct her in an episode of Night Gallery, then I maybe would have given it a positive review. Uh, yeah. You know, so she could have brought the axe on him. I I don't get why people. You know, if it wins Best Picture, if it actually wins Best Picture, uh, I don't think it's going to be uh, remembered. Uh, it, I I think it's going to be forgotten. I mean, who who watches Nomadland now? Oh, Jesus! What an awful <laughs> yeah. whatever. Everything's yeah. been awful the last fucking three years. So I can't. What am I going to yeah. say? The, Sounds like a broken the record. Fable, yeah. 
but the Fablemans, uh, I mean, it's uh, trust me. Uh, people are going to be watching uh, Elvis, and they're going to be watching Top Gun, and they're even going to be watching Avatar, which uh, I was not big on. Than than the Fablemans, it, it, it's uh, it, it's going to be. Ugh. Yeah, <sighs> it's, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a very interesting uh, next uh, thirty to sixty days in a lot of these realms that we occupy here. So uh, get your popcorn ready and strap in because shit's about to get crazy. But until then, we're gonna go ahead and sign off. Let's hit the spring yard and let's go home. Good night, everybody. Wave to the crowd. Let's go Thank home. You. Bye.